Well, what a difference a day makes. Exactly 24 hours ago, this area was dealing with Hurricane Ian. But the good news is Ian is gone. We've got partly cloudy skies. Perfect night for college football. Temperature in the 70s. Sunbelt football for you here on ESPN. It's Coastal Carolina. The Shauna Clears at home taking on the Eagles of Georgia Southern. And with that, welcome. Welcome you up to the broadcast booth alongside Nate Ross. I'm Jeff McCarriger. All right, here we go again. We've seen this storyline before. We've got two of the top quarterbacks in the Sun Belt going head-to-head. It seems like any time we've talked about this, Vegas has the over-under around 70. It ends up being a 6-3 to three ball game. So the question tonight is, are the quarterbacks going to shine, or will the defenses have their say? I think the defenses can play really well tonight and still a lot of points up. Two very capable quarterbacks, very talented quarterbacks, and great receivers to throw it to. All right, let's talk about these quarterbacks. We'll start with Kyle Van Treese, and what a season he's put together so far for Georgia. He's been really good for the Eagles. He was a Buffalo transfer who played against the Shining Clears last year. You can see the numbers there, 61%, six picks. Not a big deal. They throw it 50 times a game. He's been really good. On the other side, who's going to be Jason McCall's go-to guy? They've graduated from great ones. Sam Pinckney has become the go-to guy. Moves the chains, only one touchdown, but does some really good things offensively for this football team. Coastal Carolina 4-0 and on the season. Georgia Southern now 3-1 and as we get to the things that matter here tonight just before uh, kickoff, Nate. Well, for the Eagles, you got to be careful with the explosives. The Chanticleers um, love to get off going early, and the Georgia Southern has been beat deep a couple times this year. Secondly, spread, keep spreading the wealth. They throw it. They have four guys. They get plus 20 receptions. For the Chanticleers, they got to make Van Treese retreat. Not necessarily sack him, but just mess his timing up. And lastly, close with conviction. Georgia Southern will spread you out. They will make you make a play in space. If the Chanticleers can't do that, the Eagles can take it to the house. This should be a fun one to watch again. Thank goodness Ian is finally out of here. Our thoughts, obviously, to everyone down in Florida and to families uh, we're watching this one down in the Fort Myers area, including uh, the head coach for Georgia Southern, the Eagles, uh, his parents, Clay Hilton's parents down in the Naples area. Fortunately, they're okay, but our thoughts down there. I'll tell you what, up here in the Carolinas, you and I live uh, not too far from here, kind of dodged a bullet. So good to have yeah, some football did. tonight. Very lucky damage, but not a lot of big-time damage. But we thoughts and prayers with the people in South Florida, the west part, west coast of South Florida. All right, we will see Georgia Southern's offense on the field, and there is big number six, the graduate transfer from Buffalo, Kyle Van Treese, 6'2", 225, a sixth-year senior. And I'm telling you, this guy is experienced. He is cool. He is calm under pressure. He is poised, and we've been looking forward to watching him play. Hand off up the middle and across the 30-yard line, so he'll pick up of about five yards on first down here for the Eagles. Jalen Wade took it that time, but they got a bunch of really good running backs. If they can get any semblance of a running game, the passing game is more of a surprise and much more effective. Van Trees leads the Sun Belt in passing. Almost 1,300 yards that he's passed for this season already. He's averaging 323 yards passing per game and fires this one complete to the far sideline right at the marker as it's caught by Derwin Burgess, a sophomore from Riverdale, Georgia. Jordan DeStrong, Jordan, D. D Jordan Strong, excuse me, on the coverage, was injured in his back now, and he's a leader of that uh, secondary. You can see him top of your picture, number two. Was good enough for a first down, so first and ten here for the Eagles. Bo Johnson in motion. They fire complete on the screen pass. Off to the right side again. Caught by Marcus Sanders, Jr. Just his third reception of the year. And, you know, this is that play that you and I talked about a lot coming into today. Just those little screen passes over to the right, over to the left, that have been so successful for the Eagles. He gets rid of it quick, and you can see they're spreading you out over the entire football field. And they have playmakers who get big-time yards after they catch it. Another first down here right away for Georgia Southern. Van Trees fires over to the left side. Jeremy Singleton with the catch. And right away, you can just see the poise of Kyle Van Trees. He is a, I mean, football is in his blood. Football is in his family. He was taught at a young age, hey, you get 2.1 seconds to find your receiver. And that's always been in his head. And if you look, he's always gets rid of it quickly. Here's another strike to Singleton. 
And out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Pass caught by Jeremy Singleton. The way they run all these screens, speaking of Georgia Southern, and the way they hit those are quick outs, you just can't let anybody get behind you. You up a couple yards, and you got to get tough and get into the red zone. But just don't give one deep and don't let them break free. Third down and a yard. Again, screen pass caught by Singleton. And he's going to have enough for the first down. That's a running play for Georgia Southern. It really is. That's a running play for them. Just get it to the outside. There's no way you can jump the route because he gets rid of it in probably half a second. And they got a couple yards. That's all they needed for the first down. Very sure-handed receivers. As we said, four guys with plus 20 catches coming into the game. Opening drive here for Georgia Southern. Can the Eagles 3-1. and one. Van Trees rolling out, buys time, and fires incomplete. Good diving effort by Burgess over near the sideline. Couldn't come up with it. Yeah, Durham Burgess is kind of their Swiss Army knife, a little bit of everything. He gets in the slot, he gets in the wideout. He was open there, big time cushion on defensive backs, just couldn't reel it in. Second down and 10 now for Georgia Southern. They are 10th in the nation, tops in the Sun Belt in total offense. They are averaging over 500 yards per game. And they're at it quickly here on second down. Another strike just inside the 35-yard line. And, you know, just like Coastal Nate, Vantrese is going to have so many different weapons. I mean, he's got four main guys that he goes to, but we'll see him fire complete passes to probably six or eight guys by the time this one's over. Well, if you're defensive coaches for the Chanticleers, you're, un, you're, not, you're not unhappy with that. Lance Bregan hit him as soon as he caught the football. Maybe give him second thoughts next time you go to catch it, but there's a big third down early in the game. Make a third down and five. Caleb Hood in motion. Van Trees looks right. And the catch is made just shy of the 30-yard line. And this is going to bring up a decision here for Georgia Southern. It looks like they're going to quickly go for it on fourth and short. And the catch is Shonda clears off balance here going very quickly. Van Trees hands it off. And I think Jalen White, no, I'm not sure he's going to get it. He gets it beyond the 30. He had to get to the 29. That's where the marker is. It's going to be really close. Trying to clear just saying he didn't make it. Yeah, they're going to say first down, Coastal Carolina. So a big stop for the Shawna Clears defense after Georgia Southern, a strong first opening drive. Give credit to that defensive front. He only needed a yard. You can see the marker at the top of your picture. He needed two yards. Big number 15, Gerard Clark in the middle of all that thing. And he used right. He got across the 30, but didn't get to the 29. They tried to out-quick him with the snap. Great preparation, great defense by the shots, and they get the ball back. So good-looking opening drive for Georgia Southern, but stalls on a four, fourth down uh, opportunity. And now we'll see Grayson McCall on the field for the first time. And right away to the ground, handoff. Room up the middle and out to the 50-yard line. So right away, a handoff to Max Balthazar, who has been one of the many running backs by committee. I think that says number 13. Yes, it is. And it is. There he is. Breaks that one tackle and then has open field until the third level finally gets him. <laughs> Maybe the fifth. On the depth chart when the season started, Balthazar, but he's getting his opportunity. Redshirt freshman. And now McCall looking to the air, fires incomplete. He caught it, but he wasn't in bounds when he did catch it. That's the speed guy on this football team. That's Jared Brown, number 14. Grace McCall had to wait for him to get open, and he just ran out of football field. Jesse Brown set up in the slot. Another redshirt freshman from Lilburn, Georgia. Jason McCall's changing the play. Yeah, Jamie's told us several times he has the freedom to change the play whenever he sees something he doesn't like, and that one is incomplete. So third down and ten now coming up for the Shauna Clears. Well, real quick, quick, we were talking about Balthazar. Uh, Braden Bennett, who was supposed to be the opening day starting running back for Coastal, still out with an injury. Reese White, still out with an injury. Uh, we got word that Nate's Hope 
uh, out with an injury this week, so he's not available. So you tell me, C.J. Beasley, the fourth-string running back, now the starter, and now you got Balthazar and a few other guys. I mean, it really Ed is Good, running back by committee. Ed Good got hurt preseason camp, so they're playing with guys that they didn't think would start. Big third down and 10 for McCall, and he's going to be wrapped up, sacked back at the 40-yard line. They sent the house that time, knowing it was a passing situation, gambled on man-to-man defense in the secondary, and they got to him. You can see everybody right up the middle. 15 is in there, 33. Marquez, Watson, Trent, and just got in his face, and... Grace McCall didn't, didn't uh, throw a pick and didn't lose the football, but he's going to give it up on a punt. That will bring Evan Crenshaw to punt here for Coastal Carolina, the freshman from Florida. A little bit of wind at his back. Not much wind, but there is his behind him. Well, he has been so good. The season catch is made by Amari Jones, and he'll be stopped and gang tackled at the 30-yard line. And that will bring us to our first out here from Coastal Carolina just in a way here in the first quarter Georgia Southern will have the football for the second time when we come back there you see the huddle for Georgia Southern again the Eagles coming into tonight at 3-1 and one overall making their first conference uh Facing their first conference opponent tonight, as you take a look at their stats, Nate, and their offense, again, we mentioned earlier, number one in the Sun Belt, 10th in the nation, over 500 yards per game. Only one sack allowed because a lot of experience, except number 74 on the offensive lines of freshman. Everybody else are fifth or sixth year players, and that man, number six, gets rid of it without getting in trouble. Very poised, very accomplished quarterback. He's seven for eight to start. The single-season record for passing for Georgia Southern is 1,852 yards. A big play here out to the 50-yard line on the ground, Jalen White. But for Van Trees, again, the school record for a single season, 1852. And right now, coming into today, he's at 1,290 yards already. So what they did there, they, in the, they formationed the defense. So there was three guys to the wide side of the field. That means three defenders. It's only eight left to try to tackle. They couldn't kill him wait until he had a big game. Just beyond the 50-yard line, just into Coastal Carolina territory. Really good play there. Lance Boykin saw everybody coming at him with a lot of white shirts. But he got to the ball carrier and got him in the backfield. Very, very small gain, if any. There's Burgess in motion out to the right. On second down and six. Van Trees under pressure, lobs it down the right side and incomplete. Again, looking for Burgess. Yep, good coverage out there. I believe it was to Jordan Strong out there on Burgess. Yep, number two on number two right there. And they're having a little conversation coming back. Good coverage. Ball was just overthrown. Van Trees has got to get rid of it. You can see Burgess trying to come back to the ball, but really good job by Jordan Strong to kind of block him out like a basketball player would. Third down and six for Van Trees and Georgia Southern. And now the Eagles going to change the play. Looks over to the left and throws behind his wide receiver. And that will bring up fourth down now for the Eagles. Well, Coastal Carolina is getting what you thought they'd get. Lance Boykin on one corner to Jordan Strong on the other. Both excellent coverage and excellent cover when the ball's uh, being run. And they, Georgia Southern just can't complete a pass. That'll bring out Anthony Beck, the punter for Georgia Southern. Ray Guy Award candidate for 2022. And this guy has got a leg. Wow. 
above the top of the stadium. Gets this one to land just inside the 10. Takes a roll out to the 11. He has been terrific this season for the sixth time now. A punt that lands inside the 20. So Coastal Carolina will bring their offense onto the field for the second time. No score. Eight twenty-one to play in the first quarter as we welcome you back to Brooks Stadium here in Conway, South Carolina, Georgia Southern and Coastal Carolina, meeting for the ninth time. There you see Georgia Southern leads the all-time series five games to three, but Coastal has won the last two now. And the last one, from what people told us, and I kind of remember it, was in a downpour in Statesboro last year. The whole game, artificial turf, which helps, but in a downpour. Couldn't have a better football weather than we have tonight. Yes, it is absolutely perfect temperature, right around 70 degrees. Again, Coastal's offense on the field now for the second time. And McCall with the handoff. And a pickup of maybe a yard for Coastal Carolina. Well, again, the shot clears 4-0 to start the season. The only 4-0 team in the Sun Belt. That was C.J. Beasley in there that time. So, Balthazar, the first series, C.J. Beasley in there now, number four. They fake it to him, fired to Brown. He finds a seam. And all the way out across the 35-yard line. Well, it was Jamie Chadwell this week who said, hey, C.J. Beasley needs help. Like, I mean, he's the only true running back who's left. And they really thought that they were going to be able to put a package in here for Jared Brown, and right away we see it. Well, that we talked about the short screens for Georgia Southern, a running play. That's a running play. Get Jared Brown the football in space. He's going to outrun most people, and he just did it there. McCall fakes it up the middle and throws complete. Nice catch made on that sideline, just keeping his feet in bounds. Sam Pinckney, one of the players you highlighted back in the open. Yeah, perfect pass right there to Pinckney. Gets one foot down. He might have got them both down. He did. Well, no, just one. That's all you need in college. It's funny. Every time we talk to coach about Jared Brown, he always says he can really run, and he can. Second down and one here for the Shauna Clears. And McCall clapped, calling for it. The snap was late, so maybe some miscommunication there. And a flag on the field. Somebody might have moved. False start. False start. Offense. Offense. Everyone but the center. <laughs> Five yard penalty. <laughs> Play. <laughs> Come Second on, give me numbers. Give me numbers. Not everyone but the center. So obviously Willie Lampkin was wrong and everybody else was right. Willie's going to say, no, I was right. You were all wrong. <laughs> so offsides on 10 of the 11 players. <laughs> That's what the ref said. From second and one to second and six now. McCall throws complete across the middle, just inside Georgia Southern Territory. Quick little pitch and catch by Jared Brown again. Again, Jared, a red shirt freshman. Zone defense, two deep safeties. Jared Brown just finds the window. And if you get open, Mr. McCall will find you. Had a career high five catches, 129 yards, and two touchdowns last week. Balthasar back in there, running back. And they give it up the middle. And again, they'll pick up maybe a yard. LJ McLeod, number 96, in there. They got some big guys in the middle. 53, Trayvon Locke is 305. Christian Varner is 290, number 92, and they rotate a bunch of players in there. 
Play with an odd front. You see three guys, three defensive linemen. That means eight back in coverage. Beasley in motion out to the right. Wide open. A call hits him. And that's going to be a first down all the way to the 33-yard line. C.J. Beasley got it. Number 20, Seth Robertson's waiting for him. And the defense is supposed to deliver the blow. Watch him pop number 20, Seth Robertson, right here. Boom. Get out of my way. That's the way he wants to see running backs run the football. That's why he needs help. He does that 25 times a game. Coastal on the move now on their second drive. They fake it to Beasley, pitch it to Brown. Nice cut to find some room, and he'll be one yard shy for another first down. We see this again. This is the perfect call against a blitz coming from your offense's right, the defense's left. And there's less players out there. Brown out doesn't need a big opening. Gets another first down. Excuse me. Got nine of them. Second and one. Beasley stays in at running back. They give it to him. And he's going to be wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. So third and one now coming up for the Shawna Clears. Marquez Watson Trent got in there, kind of spun him around and got him going in the wrong direction. Otherwise, his momentum might have gotten him the first down. See what Jamie Chadwell, the head coach for Coastal Carolina, has up his sleeve here on third and one. Just what I was thinking, something that they're not ready for. Again, Beasley in the backfield. McCall looking over to the sideline. And a pitch to Beasley. Cuts it upfield. First down and more inside the 20. Spins inside the 15 all the way down to the 12. When you look at players and you recruit players, you can look at their speed. You can look at their agility. You can't look at this. Watch this effort. This is just God-given. There's one cut right there. He jumps over the defensive back. And he's still not down. Look at the balance. Puts his hand down. Gets another three yards. Big time play by C.J. Beasley. First down at 10. They'll give it to Balthazar. He finds room up the middle. Stays on his feet, gets inside the five. What a strong run by Balthazar. Well, when you see C.J. Beasley do it, you say to yourself, come on, man, I'm not going to be outdone. <laughs> he looked at the bench like, you want me to come out? Heck no, not after that run. <laughs> Stay in there. Great job by the left side of the offensive line to open up that hole for him. There's no lumbering running backs for Deshaun DeClears. They are quick, all of them. Balthazar will stay in, second down and about a yard and a half. Tight end time, maybe. A little bit of a high snap, nice catch. Good tackle in the backfield. Justin Ellis, the defensive end, just read it perfectly. Grab Balthazar before you get ahead of steam up. Ellis, a 60-year senior from Roswell, Georgia. Good job. Comes from that backside, wraps him up. Yeah, Coach Helton really likes that side of the defensive line. Dylan Springer, he mentioned this week, and Justin Ellis. Still get a first down inside the five. Beasley back in. And McCall's going to keep it and dives in for the score. I wasn't sure he was going to give that one up or if he was going to keep it. It looked like he kind of held it right in the basket of C.J. Beasley for a while and decided, now nah, I'm going to take this one myself. It's a read, and he waited until the last possible second. You can see him looking. He's, no, nah, I'm not giving it to you. I see the opening outside. He bounced it out. Three-yard touchdown. It's almost like he had given it to him and then took it back. It's not nice. Once you give it to him, you have to give it to him. 
And the extra point is good. Cade Hensley, 20 for 20 on extra points this season as Coastal takes a 7 to nothing lead. Tracy McCall gives it, takes it back. Basically untouched for lives in the end zone to give the shots a 7-zip lead. Coastal Carolina on top, 7 to nothing. Just 58 seconds left in the first quarter. We touched on this earlier, but there you see the injuries for Coastal as, yes, almost everybody hurts. Love the creativity there by Alex Souza, our producer and staff. 13 different players. Some people would say smoke and mirrors. Coach Chabo will say we finally have developed some depth in the program, and it's absolutely true. When you get to fourth and fifth running back, being really productive, that's depth. By the way, in case you didn't catch the reference, I'm old enough to get it. I was instructed about it. Are you? <laughs> yeah, we had to let you in on it. REM, famous rock band out of the state of Georgia. And Everybody Hurts, one of their hit songs. It wasn't, it wasn't, a, Sinatra, it wasn't a Sinatra song? I thought it was a Sinatra song. <laughs> First and 10 for Van Trees. Fakes up the middle, nearly intercepted, and then nearly caught for Georgia State as well. Derwin Burgess almost came up with it. He tipped it to Jordan. Why can't I say his first name? To Jordan Strong. Watch this. There's the tip. Probably knocked it off line where he had an eye on it, and it hits the teal turf. Incomplete. Second down and 10 here for Van Trees. Under pressure. Throws it away. Well, Coach Chavo told us this week, I don't know if we can get to him to sack him because he's only been sacked once all year, but can we mess up his timing? And that's exactly what they did on that play. He had to throw it quicker than he wanted to. The defensive back had him covered as well to Jordan Strong again, and he threw it out of bounds. Bingo, third down in a heartbeat. I think it was Braylon Ryan, Ryan who was putting heat on Van Trees. On third down and 10, throws a little bit low, but a nice catch made by Caleb Hood. Again, one of the really four go-to wide receivers that Van Trees has. He's got Singleton, Burgess, Jones, and Caleb Hood, the senior from Georgia. Whether it was designed that way or not, there was only one guy that could have caught that ball, and that was number seven. Ball was down low away from the defense. Gives him a first down, gives him a new set of downs with the clock running out in the quarter. Coming up on 20 seconds left. Gerald Green gets it. And out near the 45-yard line. Actually, they're going to spot him down at the 43. So second down and short. Coming up for the Eagles. Was that the last play? Or are they going to run one more here before the end of the first quarter? Looks like they're going to run out of time. Gerald Green, the burst guy, the speed guy. Got slowed down a little bit, but got a nice little gain. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. So a long drive by Coastal Carolina ends in a touchdown. And after one, that's it so far. The shot clears on top 7 nothing. Well, there you see Clay Helton, the head coach for Georgia Southern. First year as the head coach here for the Eagles after a 12-year career at University of South Car or, uh, Southern California, rather, last six was spent there as the head coach. It's part of seven bowl appearances, including the Rose Bowl back in 2016. Had a chance to catch up with him yesterday. And boy, he was fired up to take over this program. Yes, he was. Give is to Gerald Green, and he'll pick up a yard. And, you know, our, our, one of our first questions to Coach Helton was, you know, why, why Georgia Southern after being at USC for 12 years? And he said, you know, the way that football is now, I know why he grew up in the Southeast. So he knew about Georgia Southern. He knew about the six national championships at the Division I AA level. Uh, he knows about the three bowl wins they've had just yep. in the, what, six or seven years of being FBS. He said, why can't we be Cincinnati? Yep. Why can't we build something like that? So really great conversation with Clay Helton. Big third down here, third and two. 
And they're going to get the first down out close to the 50-yard line. The run by Gerald Green, redshirt junior from Columbus, Georgia. He's got some straight-ahead speed, but he had some nice little hop moves there to get that yard and then some. Coach Helton, we were told tonight, I didn't realize this, got the job in November. The day he got hired or the next day is when the Chanticleers went down to Georgia Southern. So we got a chance to see the team he was going to take over practice and play. And he said that was a great advantage to see the to evaluate the talent. First down and 10. Again oh. on the ground, but nowhere for Gerald Green to go. Good job right there. You see big number 15 getting on out of that pile. And Travis Geiger, number 5, 6, 4, 3, 10. Stopped for nothing, basically. Injured player down for Coastal Carolina. Can't quite see who it is from up here. Joshua Sharp and company out there, the athletic training staff. And it's hard to see the number. Looks like he's going to get up on his own, and that is a good thing. I think it's Roland Wooden. Yeah, it is. Roland yeah. Wooden, redshirt senior from Ackworth, Georgia. Shaking that right arm. He, he gave the nod like, I'm okay. Trying to shake it off. Well, that is good news because when he first went down, it looked like he was yep. really hurt. Just kind of flopped his right arm down onto the teal turf. You are one tough human if you're playing the defensive line right there. And some of his teammates might have fallen on top of him. You can see everybody gets up and he doesn't. But he came off on his own power. That's a good thing. So a pickup of one second down to nine. Jalen White back in at running back for the Eagles. And that one is incomplete. You know what? You can immediately see the adjustment on the screen passes by the defense for Coastal Carolina. Oh, they had, they had all the screen quick. outlets covered. Yep. Close with conviction was one of my important things to look at. Good job on the ground, knocked it loose. Uh, Georgia Southern's gotten away from the quick throws that they did in the first couple series. They're trying to get a little more out of it. Sean DeClears, as you just said, are adjusting quite well to it. That was Jacob Prochet on the coverage on that last one. Third down and nine. They're coming after him. Oh, they're coming big time. Perfect play. Catch is made and inside the 35 yard line. And there is Amari Jones again, the fifth year senior from Frisco, Texas. Had a touchdown in their game last week. Transfer out of two lane. The problem is when you blitz, it's one on one, and they love those long crossing routes. The offensive line did just enough to give Van Trees time to throw it and a big time game. Van Trees, 9 of 15 for 67 yards. With time, throws into the end zone and fires the strike right into the hands of one of his favorite receivers, Derwin Burgess, touchdown Eagles. Number two, Derwin Burgess Jr. Boy, when you give Kyle Van Trees time, he is going to absolutely tear you apart. Bias Fletcher on the coverage, but the offensive receiver got the angle on him, and Van Trees throws it perfectly. He's right there. But it was a perfectly thrown pass. Extra point to tie it up for Georgia Southern. Yeah, you know, not terrible coverage by no. Tobias Fletcher. Just a really well thrown ball. And the extra point is good to tie this one up. So just in a way in the second quarter, a 10-play, 75-yard drive as Georgia Southern ties it up. Well, after a little bit of a slow start on their first two drives, how about this as a response for Georgia Southern? Ten plays, 75 yards, in just three minutes and 27 seconds to drive down the field and tie this one up. 
And this boot will go out of the end zone and out to the 25-yard line for Coastal Carolina. Kyle Van Trees now 10 of 16 for 101 yards and a touchdown after firing that last strike to Derwin Burgess. And if you're Chad Staggs for Deshaun Declear's defensive coordinator, you blitzed, they picked it up and made a really good play. You went man coverage deep, they beat you on a perfect pass. So uh, you got to come up with something different because Van Trees, when he gets in a rhythm, he is really good. Coach Chatterbell told us how accurate he thought he was when he watched him. He's absolutely correct. Grayson McCall in Coastal Carolina. Back on the field. Grayson, four of six for 59 yards. Fakes the handoff to Beasley and throws complete. And that's going to be first down. Yeah, first down as catch was made by Tyson Mobley, his first catch, and rolls for the first down. By the way, we do not have the 6 3 game we talked about in the open. <laughs> right, yeah, we've beaten 6 to 3. Still a long way to go for the over-under of uh, about 70, was it 69 oh, and a half, 60, 70, yeah. depending on where you look. First down and 10. And it's caught out to the 50-yard line. Quick catch and nice pass by Grayson McCall. Sam Pinckney with the first down. Well, when you fake it to the running back, it holds the linebackers for a split second. And Sam Pinkney at 6'4 gets inside leverage on the defensive back. And like I said before, if you're open, Mr. McCall will find you. That's two passes, two first downs. McCall fakes up the middle and fires incomplete. There was a lot of white jerseys around both receivers that time. I'm not sure Grace McCall just didn't throw that one away, which was a wise decision. There's only two guys in the route. There's at least four defensive backs back there. So advantage Georgia Southern on that one. They play a bunch of different defenses. They play a lot of zone defense, too, with at least one safety, sometimes two. Now we got one deep safety. Play clock down to three. He needs a break. And McCall complete. He saw the soft coverage there, and he changed that play as well. Now it's complete. They're giving you a seven, eight-yard cushion. Just take it. Number five, Tyler Roberts. Tyler Roberts that time makes the catch. His first one of the night. And now third down and about five, it looks like, here for Coastal. New core of wide receivers in there. Look a little confused, but plenty of time left, only 10. Yeah, I didn't think it looked good. Because Chadwell stopped it. Yeah, they only had 10 guys on the field. Somebody came running off at the last timeout. second. It Coastal might have been Carolina. Tyler Roberts. First charge timeout. And all of a sudden, Coastal was left with just 10 men on the field. You're allowed to play with 10. But when the other team's got 11, you're at a disadvantage. <laughs> so Coach Chavo wants to go 11 on 11. I don't blame him. Bell tie game here at 7, third down and 5. 10.50 left to go here in the second quarter alongside Nate Ross. I'm Jeff McCarriger. Well, for Georgia Southern, we talked a lot about the offense on both sides, both quarterbacks. For Georgia Southern, their defense, Nate, 12th in the conference in defense. They're allowing 430 yards per game, and that's obviously something that Coach Helton talked about in our conference call and yep. obviously an area of improvement that the Eagles are looking for. Yeah, they've been hurt by the run. They've been hurt by a couple, as we talked about in the open, explosion plays. There's the boss for Sean DeClears with the visor, Jamie Chadwell. So funny, we asked Coach Helton, what do you like and what do you not like <laughs> about Coastal Carolina? And he laughed. He's like, well, I, I can tell you I don't like playing them. <laughs> but, you know, he mentioned a great point. You know, they, they have had some adversity because of the travel, right? They couldn't leave when yep. they normally do. They couldn't do run-throughs in practice here at the stadium. They actually left at 8 a.m. this morning. But he said, you know, a lot of times a season, a program can be defined early on by these type of bonding moments, these type of games, and especially if you go on the road and win one. He said, great opportunity on the road to get one against a very good team, and he's absolutely correct. 
Third down and five. McCall looks right, now throws that way, bobbled, and it's going to be incomplete. I'm not sure he's going to kick a field goal here. I think he's going to go for it. Nope, I'm wrong. Going to go for a big-time field goal. Or just punt or it away, punt. one of the two, yeah. Yeah, they're going to kick it. Yeah, they're going to bring out 60. Evan Crenshaw. Oh, excuse me. It looked like he was warming up for a field goal. It is not the normal punter. Yeah, it's actually not Crenshaw. It's Mac West who's going to come out to punt it away. Crenshaw has been so good this season. He's buried six inside the 20. That's what he wants to do. Just stick one up there and go down and down it. And West puts some backspin on it. Takes a nice bounce for Coastal Carolina down to the 11-yard line. So Mac West, the backup punter, comes in and chips it down to the 11. Georgia Southern back on offense when we come back to Conway. Well, we were just talking about Clay Helton, the head coach for Georgia Southern, and one of the things he said he dislikes about Coastal Carolina is having to play against this guy right here. What a job Jamie has done with the Coastal Carolina program. In his fifth season now as a head coach, we've talked about the 11 National Coach of the Year awards he won two years ago, but one of, uh, what, just a handful of teams to win 11 games now or more in back-to-back -back seasons. Just amazing what he's done with this program. James Madison and the Shantz, the undefeated teams in the league. So far in the eastern part of the league in football is Murderer's Row, I believe is what Coach Help called it. Coastal 4-0 so far this season. You know, Coastal's actually won seven consecutive games dating back to last year. Georgia Southern brings the offense back on the field. Van Trees in all kinds of trouble and has to throw it away. That's why he's only been sacked once this year. He could have tried to make something happen. He probably would have got sacked. Even though the ball's on the 10-yard line, lived to play another down. He just chucks it in the stands, and it's second down. Great That's pressure. That's what happens when you excuse me. That's what happens when you're a six-year player. Great pressure by Emmanuel Johnson, the transfer from Georgia Tech. There he is. He comes from the back side. Something to fire that one out of bounds. Second down and 10. Van Trees throws complete to Jeremy Singleton. Gets across the 20. And about a half yard away from the first down. Shawnee clears obviously, good, well, not obviously, but they're in his own defense. They just found the opening. And found Jeremy Singleton. Georgia Southern working quickly. The snap actually just hit Van Trees, and the helmet bounced into the hands of Jalen White, but a flag. I don't know Ball if they start. were set. Yet. Offense, number five. Five yard penalty. Replay. That's Third lucky. Down. Because that could have been a fumble, loose football, Sean clears football inside the 20. Watch this. I mean, Van Trees was there looking for it. That was really lucky ball right to Jalen White. And, of course, if that's a live ball and a fumble, Sean clears behind the penalty and get the football. So it could be a huge miscue by the Eagles. Brings up third down and six. Patrice, I'm able to see a little change in the defense for Coastal Carolina, so change in the play. And, yeah, fires a complete across the 20-yard line. You know, that, that's something that Van Trees does that we see across the nation in college football is the clapping, right? Yep. And a lot of times in that first clap, it's just a fake, just to try and see if they can get the defense to move sure. a little bit and just a little bit of a hint of maybe the adjustment the defense is going to make. And sure enough, on that first clap, he saw something, changed the play, and it worked. And they, oh, they did give him first down yards. I thought he stopped them before the two. Injured player down again for Coastal Carolina. I was watching a game midweek this week, and they do it like in the NFL in the silent. They clap, and then there's a certain period of time it snapped after the clap, not the clap. And it really messed up the defense a little bit. Shane Bruce, of course, a linebacker coming out on his own power, which is always good. Sometimes you just get shaken up. It's a, it's a brutal game. No, I didn't think it was a first down. No, it is. I'll be all right. It is a first down. <laughs> I thought it was a 19. It's a 21.
Just a heads up, experienced audible by Van Trees. Yep. To get the first down. Lewis in motion, handoff up the middle. And a gain of maybe a yard or two here for Georgia Southern. That's the other thing Coach Elton said. He really believes in his offensive line. We talked about the experience. He said, but Logan Mang- Langemeyer is going to have a tough day because he's got number 15 right in his face. Gerard Clark the whole game, and he just bottled up that play. You can see Langemeyer right there, number 66, the center. A fifth-year starter as well. But Empty backfield, so five wide receivers spread out here for the Eagles on second down and eight. Vantrese with time, tipped across the middle and intercepted. So a huge turnover for Coastal Carolina. Trey Pinckney with the interception. And how about Coastal Carolina's defense? They came into today tied for first in the nation with 14 takeaways. So give them number 15 here on this one. Ball goes off the receiver's hands and watch 39 Pinckney. Right place, right time. You know, we talked about how they pop the receiver so many times, and sometimes you get a little short arms because you know you're going to get, especially over the middle. I don't know if it happened that time, but the turnover cloak is alive for number 39 right now. 15 forced turnovers on the season. That's really good. So now Coastal deep inside Georgia Southern Territory. First and 10, tie game at 7. And McCall's going to keep it himself. Gets around the outside and down to about the 15-yard line. 15 takeaways this year for Coastal Carolina and their defense. And there you can see the production that that's led to. 42 points off turnovers for Coastal this year. 16 points a game. A chance to add to that here on second and two. McCall tucked that ball. There was no option there. It might look like an option, but he tucked it under the left arm. He was going. He's got C.J. Beasley in there. Run back with him off to his right on second down and short. Fakes it to him. McCall now throws it back to Beasley, and he will get the first down. Takes a big hit. Right in his face was Quinn Williams. Put him down. Quinn Williams, the backup defensive lineman, but the flow went right. Quinn Williams did not get, did not take the bite and go with the flow. Watch, everything goes right. He comes back. Quinn Williams just holds his ground. When you're the last guy, you got to put 21 people between you and the other sideline. That's what he did. He made a good play. First down here for Coastal. First down. A change of personnel here at the last second. For the Shawna Clears. Yeah, new left tackle. I know Will comes out. Three seconds left on the play clock. They give it to Beasley, and he's hit right at about the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard. Easily with his fourth carry. Waylon Free, among others, the one of the safeties just filled in well, read it well. You see Beasley coming off the field now, the redshirt sophomore from Norfolk, Virginia. Is that Elijah Hopkins in there now, 30? Yeah, for the first time, he'll line up in the backfield again. We're going down to, what, about six or seven deep now in the running back chart. Last week, he was a defensive back. At Georgia State, now he's a running back. McCall keeps it, lost the football, but they're going to say he's down. Saw the football come out. Georgia Southern, I think, grabbed it, but they're going to say McCall was down. Down by contact. You can see Elijah Hopkins run off the field. Remember, he was a defensive back last week at Georgia State. C.J. Beasley got a one-play rest, and he's back in there. I wonder if they're going to look at this one again. That might be what the whistle's about. I'm sure it is. For video review. Yeah, they're going to look at this one again. So they're going to send it upstairs to Terry Walters, our replay official for the first time here tonight with 548 to play as we'll take a look at it with him. 
Yeah, all right, so on that initial view, it definitely looked like he was down. Yeah, his left, his right knee hit, and then the other knee hit. Any Multiple. body part. Multiple angles on it here. It looks like yeah. the first view might end up being the best. Grayson McCall doesn't look upset, so he probably knew he was down, but he's not making the call. Yeah, the first one was the best, no question. Yep. Georgia Southern got the ball, but here we go. We'll see it from the back. I don't know. Is, might, have been, might have been closer, Nate, than, than what I thought. I think the best angle is going to be that first angle, and they'll take a look at that and slow it down. And question is, was he coming out right. before his knee hit? And that's On that last play, it looked like maybe it was loose. We'll see here. This is probably the best angle. They slow it down. Yeah, definitely stripped away. I couldn't tell if his right knee was down or not. Well, they didn't call it a fumble, so it's got to be indisputable video evidence to turn it over. Trying to catch the number of the Georgia Southern player, too. I couldn't tell if that was Quinn Williams reaching in there, trying to strip it away again. And they have the luxury of slowing it down, which the gentlemen on the field do not have that luxury. So Terry Walters and company will get it right. Yeah, from, I mean, from the naked eye, it looked like he was down. But then as we looked at it a few more times, it looked like it was closer than... Now they're taking their time, so it must be close. Yeah. Right now, it's Coastal looking at third down and nine. I'm not telling them what to do, but they need to play the Jeopardy, final Jeopardy theme song when they're doing this. Tie game at seven. Again, we joked in the open, right? Top two quarterbacks in the Sun Belt. Six Over, three. under in Vegas at about 69 and a half. We're tied at seven. <laughs> right there. All right, was that? Was his right knee down before it was ripped out? Waylon Free gets it, number five. Or excuse me, number three. All right, there the knee is down. Is the ball out? Yeah, it might still be. Ooh, this is a tough one, Nate. That is really close. That's Marquez Watson Trent, by yep. the way, reaching in with his left hand to strip it out. Terrific starting linebacker for Georgia Southern. He's that his... is close. Really the problem close. for the Eagles that we talk about all the time is that the ruling on the field is that he was down. Correct. So it's going to be really tough. Indisputable video evidence. Yep. Not, oh, it looks close. They don't go by that. Yeah, we all know the rule by now. And even though Georgia Southern might have a case, and this one is tough, they might have to just let this one stand. I'm not going to venture an opinion because I'm always After going. video review, there was a fumble. The ball will be Georgia Southern's first down. All right. The 11 -yard line. So it is a fumble, and now back-to-back -back turnovers by both teams. And you're right, that's why we never guess anymore. Yep. Well, on that last angle, when they really slowed it down, I mean, there, it was awfully close. So after the interception by Pinckney, Marquez Watson-Trent, linebacker for Georgia Southern, comes up with a big play and able to force the turnover. Yeah, let's just give him credit for ripping it out of there. So he was not part of the tackle, but that's what you're supposed to do is he's going down, trying to knock it loose. Georgia Southern now will start at their own 11. Gerald Green in at running back. They'll give it to him, trying to find something on the outside. Gets a little bit of room. Good job to get to the edge to get something out of that. They all ran the whole defense in a black shirt. He's going to pick up seven, maybe eight yards. Again, Van Treese with the audible. Moves green off to his left. Make it second down and two. Somebody moved. Coastal saying that Georgia Southern moved. Illegal snap. Offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty, replay, second down. You can't move that football. Any movement of the football is a illegal snap. You know, when you're watching a football game at home, how can they do that? How can they make that play? It's so fast on the field, and it happens so quick. It's just tough. You've got to be really prepared. From second down and two to second down and seven now for the Eagles. Van Trees all the way to the other side. Incomplete as he was looking for Jeremy Singleton, and there's Lance Boykin on the coverage. He, he thinks he should have had a pick there. Remember, he had two in a previous game. He wanted to pick. 
Yeah, Boykin with two huge interceptions and that win against Gardner Webb. He's been really good on coverage all night. And here they go, man to man with. They're probably not blitzing here because they got man coverage on the outside and two deep safeties. Georgia Southern has been uh, five for seven on third downs, pretty good so far tonight. And this one incomplete. He was looking for Burgess, and again, well covered in the secondary by the Jordan Strong. That could have been offensive interference because when he went to get the football, he just ripped Jordan Strong away rather than going for the football. Watch him take number two and take it down. That could have been offensive interference. They didn't call anything. Might have been called an uncatchable ball, but nonetheless, defense holds after the turnover, and Shots are going to make Georgia Southern punt it to them. So Anthony back on the punt again. Talked about him earlier. This guy has a huge leg. Tyson Mobley. Back open for a chance to return a low kick, so he will get a chance to return it and goes back into Georgia Southern territory to the 42-yard line. So both teams is kind of... Going back and forth here, tied at seven. It'll be Sean Clear's football when we come back. Ah, one of the great songs, Mr. Brightside. I tell you what, that fires up the whole crowd. It wasn't just the students. I think the parents were getting into that one as well. Don't pay, don't tell me students don't have fun at Sean Clear football games. They are packed in that end zone. They are enjoying it. The only bad thing is their team's going away from them in this quarter. A uh, little sing-along there during the timeout here at Brooks Stadium in Conway, South Carolina. Thanks for joining us here tonight on ESPN+. Plus. A tie game at 7, a couple of turnovers, and now the Shauna Clears with it back inside Eagles territory. And down to the 32-yard line, fighting for extra yards after the catch. Is complete. This play, there, I think it was, was that Xavier Gravette, I think, who made the catch. What did I tell you during the break? Throw it to the tight end. Yeah, tight end's been quiet so far. It took about tonight. five white jerseys, an extra couple yards, too. The Second and short, coastal. Yeah, Gravette, the red shirt senior out of Towson, Maryland. He was injured a couple games ago. Easley and Brown in the backfield on second down and two. They fake it to Beasley. McCall Ooh. nowhere to go. That was sniffed out right away by Justin Ellis again. Well, on the keeper. whether it was an option or not, he had the option of pitching it, but defensive end was there to nail him. Tried to spin away from him and get anywhere. Third and three. Great play by Justin Ellis. You could see him hesitate for just a second, wanted to dive inside, and he's like, nah, i got to stay at home. He did. It's a paying off on the tackle. Third down at two. A call, look out, under duress, lost it, a flag on the play. Jumps on it at the 35-yard line. Fourth down coming up, but we'll see what the flag is. Back where it is, it's usually holding, but we will see. And you are correct, holding against the Shauna Clears. Yeah, Georgia Southern, do they back them up? Or do they decline it? Well, if they turn it down, it'll be fourth and two. Holy, holy. Offense, number 56, 10 yard penalty. And replay. Coastal would Third certainly down. go for it. So my guess is Helton's probably going to back him up, and it looks like that's exactly yeah. what he's going to do. See Grayson McCall right there. Stripped out by Seth Robertson. Look like Danielle Wilson, 56, grabbed him. So make it third down and 12. Yeah, tough call there for the Eagles and head coach Clay Helton. Do you give him fourth down and two when you know they're going to go for sure. it? Or do you put him back in third and 12 yep. and give him an extra down? Kind of a tough call. Give him an extra chance. See what happens. Critical juncture here with three minutes left to go in the first half tie game it's at seven. Changing the play. It looked like they were going to blitz. Now they're backing out of it. McCall fakes it to Beasley with time. Rolls and throws down the sideline. It's going to be a catch by throw. Mobley. What a catch. Boy, he laid out. Georgia Southern saying he was out of bounds, but he got one foot in. That's another 
great play. I thought he was completely airborne, and I wasn't sure he was going to be able, able, able to and, get a foot and in. And they're going quick before they can stop it, but they're going to stop it. Oh, I think he just tapped his foot, but of course, remember what happened on the last play that we were talking about. So they will take a look at this one again and send it back upstairs here to Terry. Timeout. 30 seconds. I oh, know, they called a timeout. No review. Call 30 second timeout. Great well, I'd catch. Like to, yeah, I'd like to see that one again because it looked like at the last second, maybe got that right foot just to scrape a little bit. But again, awfully close on that. College football, you only need one foot. Play for a living, you need two. It is again. Here at the end, I can't quite see. It was that down the line view that was a better look at it. Grayson McCall did a good job of rotating his hips so he could throw it. Watch him turn his hips very quickly. Oh, oh that's definitely. A, yeah, that's, that's a, a good look at it right there. That's that's. For the artificial turf helps him see the pass pop up. Watch him square up. That's a tough throw for a righty going left. Right foot gets down. Oh, two really good angles at it there to see. Definitely in balance. Work by our people there too. Yeah, dragging that foot. So a first down, first down at 10. 2.44 to play, first half. Makes it to Balthazar and fires way too high here on the near sideline looking for Sam Pinckney. Just looked like, I don't know if he had the laces or not, but just slipped out of his hand. Grace McCall's 9 for 13 going in that one, but Sam Pinckney 6'4", but he 6'4", couldn't get that one. Oh, header. Well, you never know. I'm telling you, that. when you're on the sidelines, I did it for years. When you're on the sidelines... You always have to be watching. Get wiped out. Pitch off to Brown and picks up maybe a yard. You, you, when you're down on the sidelines, Nate, it's amazing. Like from up here in the booth and from watching at home on TV and even in the stands, the game really slows down. You get down there on the sidelines, those guys come at you so fast. I was just, we'll see this. He maybe should have just doink. I was a sideline reporter at Florida State when they were in their heyday once. I could not believe how fast they were. And yeah. I was I was scared. I would I would just run in the other way when it came towards me because I knew I couldn't get out of the way in time. All right, third down and eight here for Coastal. Tie game. McCall takes off running Ooh. inside the 20 and takes a huge nail. hit. He's going to be shy of the first down. And... Coming out of the pile was Derek Canteen, the defensive back. I'm not sure if he was the one who came in there and made the pop or if he was just fired up, but we'll see it again here. Nobody's open, so there's a little bit of an opening. It looked like Grace McCall starting to slide. I'm out. But you can't hold yourself there. And it definitely was Derek Canteen, the redshirt junior from Evans, Georgia, putting the hard hit on Grayson McCall. Georgia Please Southern's going to call a timeout with 143 left, one fourth down and four. And a decision for Coastal Carolina when we come back here to Conway. Coach, Coach Chadwell was talking to the referee during the, during the toll timeout. One of two things. When Grace most call starts to slide, you can't hit him like that. He was looking for a personal foul. They didn't get that. It wasn't targeting. They're going to try to field goal. Cade Hensley, the red shirt freshman from Johnson City, Tennessee, on to try and give Coastal Carolina the lead. Good snap, good hold, but the kick is no good. Pushes it wide right, and we will stay tied at seven. It's his first miss of the year. Both kickers on either side for Coastal and for Georgia Southern. Perfect coming into the season. 37 yards is way inside of his range. Yeah, Hensley Happens with a, your forearm sometimes, you just push it. He pushed it. Hensley, a 48-yarder uh, earlier this season. So you're right, well within his range. I like the move there by Coach Chabwell to go for the three, though, because Shantz won the toss and defer, so they're getting the ball back. After we play one minute and 40 seconds in this second quarter, we start the second half. So 
A 10-7 lead in the ball would have been great, but now it's 7-7. Well, yeah, a good call, too, because you would expect Hensley to make that. Yep. Like you said, not outside of his range. Van Trees on the run, dumps it count. off. It is complete, but a flag back at the 12-yard line. It's probably going to be holding back there. But Van Trees gets out of trouble, probably because his offensive lineman helped him. We'll get the call. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Ooh. Offense. Ooh, offense. Number 56. Penalty would be half the distance to the goal. Replay. First down. That's Brian Miller, the left tackle. That backs him way back. Watch the left side of your pick. Yeah, right there. He got in Adrian Hope's face. Got his hands up in Adrian Hope's face guard. Good call now to way back. 131 to play in the half. Make it first down and 20. They give it to Jalen White. A ton of room up the middle. And he's going to pick up the first down all the way out to the 34-yard line. Well, how about 24 yards, 25 yards on that one for number 25. Jalen White just four carries, 26 yards until that long carry for the first down. A miscommunication here and another flag. Vantrese fired it way short of Burgess here on the near sideline. I think they're going to call offensive interference bet on this. Pass interference. Offense. Number seven. 15-yard penalty. Replay the down. Wow, so back-to-back -back huge penalties on the Eagles. Yeah, Keith Rick Merriweather, the side judge, threw the flag from way back there and pointed towards Georgia Southern. It's back, that's 30 yards of penalties in two plays. <laughs> Give it to Jalen White. He'll make the distance up. That's what he did last time. Yeah, that first and 20 package for Jalen White seems to be pretty good. Yeah, it works well. White is in there just off to the right. Of Antrese. Tie game at seven. 71 seconds to go here, first half. And up the middle goes Jalen White, spins out near the 30 yard line. I thought the Shunts might use their timeout since Georgia Southern had such a huge distance to get to the uh, uh, marker to gain. Second down and 16. Again, the give to I White. Use it here. But yep, they are. Good move. Gerard Clark. Terrific tackle right there at the line of scrimmage. Smart play there. It's only 38 seconds. But it's third and forever. Stop him here, you force a punt, use your last time out, make him punt it. Well, you'll see the play by Clark, redshirt senior. Big man. Six foot four, three hundred and thirty-five pounds. Missed 2019 because of an injury. He is back and then some. So third down and sixteen coming up here for Georgia Southern. Here's the dilemma for Coach Staggs, defensive coordinator for Chanticleers. You know, they want, to, they want to make the first down, obviously. They're probably going to throw it. If you blitz, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage, and that's where they spread you out. If you sit back and make sure everything goes underneath you, you call timeout, you might force a punt. If you'll let anything happen, you get to the, the uh, yard to gain marker, which is on the 44-yard line. Make sure everything comes underneath that. Third down and 16, Marcus Sand. In motion sets up off to the left. Here's your screen. A fire to Lewis. Good play. Cuts it out to the 41 yard line. Still going to be about three yards shy of the first down marker. And Coastal Carolina is going to call their second timeout to stop the clock with 28 seconds left in the half. Good move. I mean, you, you never know. Bad snap. Punt goes off the side of his foot. You get field position and no timeouts left, but. Grayson McCall is a magician with less than 30 to go. We'll see what happens. They might even put it on punt block. You never know. This young man that punts it for Georgia Southern is um, 
Anthony Beck is a one-step kicker, so it's really hard to block it because he doesn't take much time to get it off. And you said he's got a tremendous leg. Maybe Chadwell again talking to the referee about something down there. Tough to tell exactly what he's talking about. Looks like maybe he's talking about maybe somebody moving too soon. What it looked like. Extensive discussion with him, like we said, about Grayson McCall didn't hit the last time out. But. Well, again, you were just talking about Anthony Beck for Georgia Southern, a redshirt senior. Again, he's a Ray Guy Award candidate. His last punt was really not indicative of what you normally see out of him. Kind 17 of drive, times. Yeah. He's had a punt of 50 yards or more. That, that was last year. They would love one right here from him. Let's get the shot to put a block. They have nobody back right now, Sean Clear. Nobody. So there is Beck. There's 11 guys right around the football. Let's see if somebody drops back. Fourth down and three. This is why nobody's back. They run this crazy punt formation. Doesn't mean they won't move in. And another whistle as the play clock ran all the way down. I think they got the timeout right before it. Yep, Georgia Southern called the timeout. That'll be their last timeout of the half. They run this formation, and normally they just motion in and run a normal punt, but you never know. Chauncey looking on. Uh, it appeared in a chess match that Coastal was prepared for it. Yep. I mean, they, 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 out, they, they immediately split and went out to either side of the field to try and cover it. If you don't go, you fake it and throw it out there because they, they are screen pass extraordinaire, this football team, in the, uh, in the white shirts. I spoke too soon about the 6-3. We beat it 7-7. I, I, was I, was, I, yeah, I was surprised that you brought that up so early because. I should have kept my mouth shut. Yeah, 7-7 again. Coastal Carolina was favored by 9.5 in this one. The over-under, which means total number of points that was expected by Las Vegas, was, again, depending on where you look, 69.5, 70. And again, with the top two quarterbacks in the Sun Belt, everyone was expecting shootout. But you and I know better because we've been doing this yep. for quite Still a nobody back for the shots. And a big, booming spiral kick. And this one's going to go all the way down to the one-yard line. And that is the Anthony Beck that we have seen before. Here's your 59-yard normal punt. Granted, there was nobody back there to catch it, but still, he boomed it. Redshirt senior again from Guyton, Georgia. Somebody might pay him to kick next year. Look at this. Perfect spiral. One man down there just to catch it on the one yard line or down it on one yard line I should say. El Costa with one timeout left but with 17 seconds on the clock and at their own half yard line I can't expect too much here for Coastal. Quarterback's receiving the snap in the end zone. Quick pass out to the right, incomplete, looking for Sam Pinckney. Stops the clock with 13 seconds, and Georgia Southern says, all right, we'll take that. Absolutely. Yeah, just, just trying to get Pinckney a little room to operate, or giving the offense a little room to operate by throwing it to Pinckney. This is when Mr. Spooly Lampkin has to get a good snap. C.J. Beasley in the backfield again. Coastal at their own half-yard line. And that one completes. So we'll give first, the four-yard line. First guy hits the man. The other guy tries to rip it loose, but that'll be it. And that will be the end of the first half. So, again, in a game that was billed as a potential shootout here in Conway, it's seven to seven, just like we just like we predicted. Second half shootout. It'll be a second half shootout. Right, yeah. All right, that'll bring us to halftime here from Conway, South Carolina, Coastal Carolina. 
Florida on the season at home against Georgia Southern. This one all tied at seven. We are back inside at Brooks Stadium here in Conway, South Carolina. At the half, it's Coastal Carolina and Georgia Southern tied at seven. Alongside Nate Ross, I'm Jeff McCarriger. Nate, let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. Not a whole lot for either offense, surprisingly. Nope, you see one little three-yard touchdown by Grayson McCall to give the shot seven on the board, and then Georgia Southern not to be denied. But here's the – this is the fumble – where the Chanticleers were in the red zone and the ball gets ripped out, close call, but it comes out. Georgia Southern gets it back, and there's the turnover by the deflected pass in the INT for the shot. So one turnover each. And then Van Trees kind of went to work here. Deep over the middle. Derwin Burgess with the touchdown to tie it up at seven. Of total yards for Georgia Southern, 213 yards. Their season average is well over 500 so far this season as they are tops in the Sun Belt. Meanwhile, for Coastal Carolina, a little bit of a struggle as well in that first half, Nate. Just 182 yards total offense for the Shawna Clears at uh, well below their average. Yeah, the, we, we were talking during the break that Shawna Clears have a – Running back of C.J. Beasley, they have others to play it, but every other play he's got to kind of come out if he gets popped or has a really good run. So they're playing with alternate running backs and really no starters, and that hurt the rush game. And then Georgia Southern's done a good job of Grayson McCall not to bother him, but just to really get some good coverage in the back end. But um, football coaches are amazingly good at readjusting at halftime. We'll see. Sean declares, as we talked about at the end of the first half, get it to start the second half. And another big play not to be forgotten uh, that we didn't get a chance to see was the missed field goal. Yep, that's true. You know, really could have been uh, a 13 to 10 or 13 or uh, 10 to 7 lead rather for Coastal Carolina as they'll get the ball to begin the second half. But that missed field goal, we'll see if that makes a difference later on in this one as well. And this one will be caught in the end zone out to the 25 yard line for Coastal Carolina. Again, it was the Shauna Clears that won the toss, deferred. So. We'll see Grayson McCall to open up play here in Conway. This field goal way inside Henry's range. Had plenty of distance, just missed it slightly right. But as a coach told me once, you know what you can do about that stuff? Nothing. It's over. Second half. Forget about it, yeah. Grayson McCall, 11 for 17 in the first half, 120 yards, no touchdowns. Kyle Van Trees, quarterback for Georgia Southern, 13 of 23, 129 yards, and that touchdown strike. No really explosive plays yet from either team. Catch is made out of the 30-yard line. St. Pitney's third grab of the evening. It's a big target. Six foot four, 215. Graduate transfer out of Georgia State, who happened to beat Army today, as a matter of fact. Up at Army to get their first win of the year. CJ Beasley in the backfield on second down and six. They give it to him. Tries to scoot to the outside, wrapped up and thrown down. Good defense by Anthony Wilson. You know, they list him as a defensive back. There he is, number 12, but he's really a linebacker. I mean, yep. watching tape on that kid, he is everywhere. I absolutely love watching him play. Big-time hitter fills really quick on the runs, as we saw right there, to the outside to meet C.J. Beasley, basically the line of scrimmage. Wilson, a redshirt junior from Columbia, South Carolina. All right, Grayson McCall and the Shauna Clears facing third down and six. Eight back in coverage. going to be tough to find somebody open. They're only rushing three. Call looks, dumps it off short, and the Shauna Clears are going to be about a yard and a half shy on the catch by Sam Pinckney. That's all that was open. Is Pinckney in a little short crossing route, hoping that he would get it and get enough to get a first down, and they're going for this. Or they're going to try to draw them off sides, which they've been very good at all year. There's a cross I see Pinckney come all the way across the formation, gets in just a good tackle. 
All right, Coastal Carolina on fourth down and one, lining up like they're going to go for it. And they are. McCall will get it. There's a flag, though, back at the 30. McCall will get all the way out near midfield, but a flag, and this one might come back. It looks like the initial call is holding against the Shawna Clears. Offense, number 56. Ten-yard penalty. Replay. Fourth down. Donnell Wilson, the left tackle for Coastal Carolina. There he is, whistled for the holding penalty. Played one game last year as a red shirt. It's hard to see it there. Grayson McCall with the point of attack. Perfect. Fourth and ten, probably not going to go for it. Tough to tell on that one, Nate. I mean, you know as well as I do, sometimes that can be the defensive end saying, oh, yep, grabbing the guy. And only, pulling him down. Only the third penalty today for the Shunts. But that's a big one because that was the first down, no question. So now Costa will kick it away to Amari Jones. Makes the catch at the 40, sidesteps the defender, and he's got a ton of room off to the right. Cuts it back inside the 20 and all the way down to the 10 yard line. Oh, what a return by Amari Jones. He had a lot of room, and he had a lot of white shirts leading the way down there. Nice punt. Great return. Watch these blockers set up from on the right side. They call a return right here and left. Oh, just split. Two would-be black shirt tacklers, and away he went. Everybody's lined up there. He busts through that one. I think the kicker ended up getting it, or at least slowing him down. Ball is spotted right at the 10-yard line, so technically first down and goal here for Georgia Southern. They fake it to Jalen White. Ball tipped, hung on to by Burgess, and out of bounds. Actually might lose a yard, and he will. So second down and goal now for the Eagles. He was lucky that ball didn't get tipped a couple times. Could have been intercepted. Threw it behind him a little bit. He still made the reception. It's a little behind him. Gets tipped up in the air, and he has the presence of mind to hang with it and then just get out of bounds. They give it to Burgess around the left side. Cuts it back and rolls down to the four-yard line. And now third down and goal. Big momentum play here for both sides. Chanticleer stop them. They probably force a field goal attempt. Georgia Southern gets it close enough or in. They go for it on fourth. This is when the cool, calm, collected Kyle Van Trees has to be exactly those three things. Georgia Southern five for nine on third down conversions here tonight. Trying to take the lead for the first time here in this game. High snap, fakes it to White. Finds Singleton, and he is in. Georgia Southern will take the lead. You see that again? They put Singleton in motion, so there was three people on the right side of the formation, but only two defenders. Nobody went with him. See, there's only two defenders out there. They're both blocked. And he walks in. Messed up the coverage there. Transfer from Houston with the touchdown. And now Alex Rayner, who's been perfect on the season, to try and make this a seven-point lead, and he punches it right through. Rayner now 23 for 23 extra points so far this season. 11.09 to play just underway here in the second half. It's the Eagles on top by a touchdown. Well, after the long punt return by Amari Jones, that set up Georgia Southern from the 10-yard line. Three plays, 10 yards, took just a minute, 25 seconds. And for the first time here tonight, it's the Eagles on top of Coastal Carolina, 14-7. to Kickoff return, guys, been very, very patient. If it's in the end zone, just gets the fair catch. 
Does he get a little antsy here because they're down seven and try to run it out? Or do the Eagles give him a chance to run it out? Matthew McDoom stands at his own goal line for Coastal Carolina. If you haven't had a chance to see him run yet, he is a flat-out speedster. He wanted Ooh, to go. Yeah, through. I thought he might take. He wanted when to he, go. When he made that catch, there was no one from Georgia Southern inside the 20. Yep. And he twitched like he wanted to go, but took a knee. So we will not see the speed of McDoom, at least not for now. It's good discipline right there because I'm sure he's told in the end zone, don't run it out. That kid, I'm telling you what, he can flat out fly. His, his run back was 95, so it was not in the end zone. I'm still expecting at some point this season for Jamie Chadwell. Let him go? Yeah, maybe some on a jet sweep, something oh, yeah, like that. Maybe definitely. just some sort of offensive package. Yep. We'll see as he gets more experience and gets more comfortable, you know, with the playbook. And Only a freshman. Yep. See if they end up using him at some point this season. McCall fakes the handoff, was looking deep. And fires complete on the far sideline for the first down. Catch made by Thomas Mobley. Number eight, Tyson Mobley. And that's another Coastal Carolina. First down. Grayson McCall led the nation last year in passes, yardage per pass. Seems like every one he completes is a first down nowadays. Looked away. It's probably his third option, and he found them. Quick pass caught by Jared Brown here on the near side. Out to the 45-yard line. Not a first down, but it's close. Jared Brown on the reception. Boy, Jared Brown has been such a great weapon here for Coastal. He's a wide receiver, but they've had to use him at running back so many times just because of the injuries to Braden Bennett and Reese White, Aaron came, Bedgood. Came out of that one a little banged up. Nate Hope went down this week. C.J. Beasley still in there and takes a shot from Anthony Wilson behind the line of scrimmage and then the Eagles defense helps out Wilson takes down Beasley for the loss I think they gave him forward progress they did give him a little but they didn't give him enough for the first down talked about Wilson earlier team's third leading tackler here he comes he feels Boom. right from the safety spot and he's a hitter you're right great fill for the Redshirt Jr. Again, they play him as a defensive back, but he's every bit of a linebacker the way he hits. Third down and short. McCall finds room and slides for the first down. Very smart play. So all he needed was the first down. Let's keep the drive alive and keep going. He's been popped a few times tonight. They don't need him getting hurt. It's going to say smart play. Yeah, just heads up. We talked yep. about... All the injuries back in the first half, 13 players right now out with injuries for Coastal. Again, McCall fakes it up the middle, looks downfield, trying to go back shoulder for Jared Brown, but not enough on that. Chance for Brown to make the catch. It's a tough one. He's bracketed inside and, and double team basically. And uh, Grayson McCall made it a tough catch because of the double coverage, and it was just too tough. Made it a tough ball to catch. I see so. Jared Brown, the shirt freshman. He's looking deep. It's just not open deep. They give it to Beasley, hesitates, dives up the middle, picks up five. Well, it was interesting. You know, we talked back in the open. We were kind of joking, but not. You know, we've been doing this a long time, so we've seen a lot of these matchups where you, you get the top two quarterbacks in the league. You think there's going to be a lot of scoring, and for some reason, it just sometimes doesn't turn out to be that way. And so we talked about the defenses and whether or not, you know, the defenses would – step up and I think you brought up a good point earlier Nate I mean there really hasn't been big chunk plays just the the one big long touchdown pass to Burgess yep. by Georgia Southern that's and, been it and one return yeah the defenses have played exceptionally well third down and five McCall goes down field and there's a big play a huge gain for Coastal Carolina the catch and a first down by Xavier Gravett the tight end 
A lot of zone defense, and Gravett just finds a hole in the zone, and Grayson McCall finds him. Watch him look off. He looks to his left, and he comes back to Gravett in the opening, a little window there, and he gets it for the first down. Sure-handed catch. 15-yard completion to Gravett. Max Balthazar back in at running back. And he will get it. Goes around the left side, and... He'll pick up five or six yards. A good pickup on first down here for Coastal. Good speed there out of Balthazar. Good short freshman. And injured player down. It's an offensive lineman, it looks like, for Coastal Carolina. It's Willie Moyes, the redshirt sophomore from Hollywood, Florida. It is. Limping off and under his own power. Dylan Luther is his backup. 65 will probably come in for him, probably for just a play. It'll be second down at five. Here for the Shawna Clears, there's Xavier Gravett, number 85. A couple of catches today. Redshirt senior from Towson, Maryland. Transfer from Morgan State. And of course, big future for that kid right there, Jared Brown. Just a redshirt freshman for the Shawna Clears in a huge season already. Second on the team this year, over 250 yards receiving coming into tonight. All right, second down and five. They fake it to Balthazar. Oh, he's wide open. And into the end zone. The catch is made. Touchdown, Coastal Carolina. Xavier Gravett again. Well, Stan, Stan Pittman was the go-to guy. The tight end's been really good on this drive. Gravett with a catch in the middle and then... Get behind the defense in the corner of the end zone. Grayson McCall finds him. Last year it was McCall to a guy named Isaiah Likely. Maybe he found another new tight end target. Xavier Gravetta with the catch. Isaiah Likely playing for the Baltimore Ravens. And now a chance for the shot clears to tie it up. Cade Hensley able to knock it right through in a tie game at 14. Gravett taking his time behind Isaiah like the last year. Depth for Deshaun DeClears, touchdown tie game. 6.51 to go, third quarter, all tied here at Conway. Well, we talked about Coastal Carolina coming into tonight's game tied for first in all of FBS with 14 takeaways. I think at 15 after the one back in the first half. Yep. And the turnover cloak making its appearance back in the first half again. Added the saber to go this year, whether it's sword or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> cloak made by one of the, I think Coach Staggs' wife made it. Defensive coordinator's wife. 15 Beautiful guard. takeaways. And again, those 15 takeaways have led to, what is it, 42 points yep, off turnovers 42. now this year. Chance at a return here in a tie game at 14 as Darius Lewis trying to get it back across the 15-yard line. We'll actually get it just beyond the 20 to the 21-yard line, and there's we'll see. An, there's an example of the McCarroll rule. Let's take a knee, brother. Fair catch. <laughs> just take a knee. 25. This way you got it at the 20. 19. They don't listen. Kyle Van Treese will bring his offense back out into the field for Georgia Southern. Van Treese, 15 of 25 tonight, 133 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. The graduate transfer from Buffalo. He actually played against Coastal last year while he was with Buffalo. Coastal won that game 28 to 25. Van Treese. Didn't have a real big game as Georgia Southern will keep it on the ground, pick up about six or seven yards here. 
there on first down. Ventrice last year in the game against Coastal while he was playing for Buffalo, 13 of 20 for just 146 yards. There's Gerald Green in the backfield, redshirt junior from Columbus, Georgia. Second down and four, Singleton in motion, comes here to a stop in the near side. Little flea flicker action, Van Treese across the middle. And incomplete, looking for his number one target today, Burgess. They got all those plays in the repertoire. Now we talked to Danny Reed, the radio voice of the Eagles, and he said that Kyle Van Treese ran this type of offense in high school. And that uh, Buffalo is a very different offense. But he was made for it, and he's obviously doing well in it this year. Georgia Southern, six for ten on third down conversions. Takes the snap, needs four for the first down. They'll get it. It's complete to Caleb Hood. Plenty for the first down. Hood came in motion in a little wheel route, and they waited to pick him up until after the ball was snapped. He was wide open. Hood, a senior from McDonough, Georgia. Big pickup of a first down there by Van Trees. Hood in the last game for the Eagles went over 1,000 receiving yards for his career. Another screen pass caught on that far sideline by Amari Jones. Just had that big punt return on the last drive. And a good pickup here on first down. He picked up about five yards. Yeah, there was nothing in that play. He was, he was nailed basically in the backfield, and he just fought through that first tackle and got half the first down distance. Jones, one of the many experienced super seniors or redshirt seniors on the squad. He's a fifth-year senior from Frisco, Texas, transfer from Tulane. Make it second down at six. Van Trees, quick looks to the right and the catch made by Burgess. Really good catch, really good coverage by the shots, but a better catch by Burgess to go up top and high point it and stay in bounds. And he had Jacob Prochet, number 23 there for Coastal, just bearing down on him. Shots make a wholesale line change up front. How about Georgia Southern on third downs here tonight? Seven of 11. Put in motion. The give is up the middle and a pickup of maybe three or four yards on first down, that first down run by Gerald Green. Middle of the Sean's line, defensively, has been really good. When they get to that B and C gap, that's where they've gotten a couple good plays. Middle of too many big bodies up there, Gerard Clark or Geiger. The pursuit right there by running the football. Yeah, Green trying to find some room outside, but there you see Pinkney and Wooden and others there to escort him out of bounds. And another big third down coming up for the Eagles. Just mentioned they're 7 of 11 on third down so far here in this game. 257 total yards of offense for Georgia Southern. They average over 500. Jalen White back in at running back. Third down and six. Van Trees looks left, and they'll pick up another first down. Catch made by Amari Jones. Gets plenty for the first down inside the... 35-yard line down to about the 33. So for Georgia Southern, they can now 8 of 12 on third downs. Tough throw from the middle of the field all the way to the far side. Far, excuse me, from the right hash all the way across the field. Good coverage out there by Manny Stokes Jr., but a better pass by Van Trees. Van Trees getting in a little rhythm right now. That one tipped. And incomplete. That's Caleb Hood right there. Very lucky that ball was tipped out of bounds. That ball got tipped up straight up in the air. That's a pick by the shunts. Quick release. Little overthrown. 
harmlessly falls to the turf. Second down and 10. Chris Chabot said we got to get Van Trees out of his rhythm. He's so good gets in rhythm. They give it to Jalen White. He'll pick up a yard, so another third down coming up for the Eagles. I haven't called Josiah Stewart's name. Ready for him to make a play defensively. Top of your picture on the end. A little bit of rain has started to fall here at the stadium. Third down and nine. Van Trees looks to the sideline and now changes the play. He's going to run out of time. There's only five on the clock. Down to three, two, one. And a timeout called by Georgia Southern with one second left on the play clock. Sort of shining clear. Substitute about six guys on that deep in the defensive uh, set before the play. Van Trace didn't like the original play, tried to change it, just ran out of time, and Coach Helton on the sideline called the timeout. Student section here at Coastal Carolina, loving it. So is the sideline getting fired up. Third down and nine, huge play coming up for the Eagles. This is the first conference game of the year for Georgia Southern. Yep. Three and one on the season. Had a huge win at Nebraska a couple of weeks ago, 45 to 42. Boy, what a start to the season for the Sun Belt. All the wins <laughs> against Power Five schools. Made their name known, no question about it, all throughout college football. And the fans back on their feet here inside Brooks Stadium. Big momentum play for both sides. Third down and nine for the Eagles. Again, they're eight for 12 on third down conversions. They give it to White, pushing his way through the line. He's going to be well shy. Be about a 47-yard field goal if they try it. Looks like they're going to. Uh, Alex rayner has got it leg he's their field goal kicker had a 43 yarder earlier this season he's four for four on the year besides stewart on that tackle this yeah, is the side gonna... you want to be on for a right footer you can hook it right in there anthony beck the punter will hold it that's alex rayner the kicker to try and put georgia southern on top again Clean snap kick is on the way, and that one is good. 45-yard field goal by Alex Rayner, who stays perfect on the season. And with just 105 left to play in the third quarter, it's Georgia Southern back on top, 17-14. To Well, if you like stats, you're going to love this one. Georgia Southern with a 17-14 lead, as you can see. And for Coastal Carolina, as much as we talk about Grayson McCall in the passing game, Coastal's averaging over 200 yards rushing per game. And, Nate, look what they're doing tonight. So far, just 75 yards yep, on the ground. Not even, not even 100. Opponents averaging just 97 yards. And you can see Georgia Southern 105 already as the rain has really picked up. McDoom with the grab. Will he have room? Looks to the outside, cuts it back up, finds a little seam, and up to the 30-yard line. Well, again, tough to tell on your screen there, but the rain it has all of a sudden really kind of opened up and starting to rain pretty heavy here at the stadium. You didn't say Will McDoom have room, did you? I think you did. <laughs> I might have. Now, I just looked on the radar. There's nothing to make in this rain. I mean, a hurricane just went through. Where where could there possibly be more rain coming from? Exactly. Ian is up in West Virginia. Yes he, yes, he is or she is. He is, I guess. They're stopping us to look at something. I don't know what. Fans scrambling for the shelter underneath the stands. Bring your parkas. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I can tell you, nobody like nobody brought umbrellas. Nobody brought parkas. Everyone put that away after Ian went through yesterday. Mine's in my garage in Charleston, South Carolina. I think there was literally 0% chance of rain there today was. after that hurricane finally went through. I don't know what the officials are looking for. Yeah, we're not, we're not getting any, unfortunately, we're not getting any communication from Jeremy Parker down on the field. You know, we did get a chance to have a really good conversation at half with Terry Walters. He's our replay official, and he kind of clarified some of the replays that we had back in the first half. Always great to catch up with those guys. And now we'll see if we get some clarification here from Jeremy down on the field. To the six-yard line? Yeah, I guess they're going to say the McDooms' knee was down at the six-yard line. Wow. And I think that's back where he made the catch. I think he actually went to a knee to make the catch. catch it, yep. I just looked on the radar. It is a small cell. I'm not a meteorologist or a doctor, and I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn last night, but there it is right here. So that's McDoom. Oh, and sure yep. enough, good call by the officials right there about the six-and-a-half-yard yep. line. All right, Mr. McCall, you got the whole field to work with. Well, from what would have been... The ball spotted at the 30, all the way back to the 6. Well, they practiced all week, both teams did, with a wet football because they thought they were going to play in a downpour. The hurricane's going, but maybe that practice will pay off because the football's going to be a little wet here. C.J. Beasley in the backfield. We'll see if they give it to him. High snap. They're going to stay in the air, fire out to the 10 yard line. Pass is complete. And Pinkney. Trey or, or Sam Pinkney wrestled out of bounds. Forward progress will give him the 11, so second down and five. Grayson McCall does not wear a glove. The receivers do. That helps a little. Grayson McCall does not. They hand it off to Beasley. Cuts it back to the right, lost the football. They're going to give him a gain of one, but say he's down. And now, hold on, we have this exact same situation back in the first half. They looked at it. It ended up being overturned, and the ball was given to Georgia Southern. Coastal wants to run to play quick, so they can't stop and look. And they're going to go upstairs and look at this one again. So hang on a minute. We've got uh, the third quarter coming to an end. They'll take a look at this one again, and we'll tell you about it when we come back. Here's a quick look at it. And oh, now that, I mean, that one looks like he was down. His bump was on the ground, but was the ball secured? Right. Tough to tell from there. Looked like he had it, but we will look at this one and discuss when we come back. Georgia Southern with a three-point lead after three quarters. Well, this has been a big point of emphasis for Jamie Chadwell ever since he took over this Coastal Carolina program is finishing strong, and there you can see a plus 21 this season for the Chanticleers in the fourth quarter. And again, as we come back live here to action in the fourth quarter, the review, as you can see, stayed in favor of Coastal Carolina. It was Anthony Wilson who put the big hit on C.J. Beasley, but... His backside, kind of his right hip, was down just before the ball came loose. And then that pass right there to Brown, he just good pass, he just couldn't hold on to it. Would have been a first down, now he forced a punch. Yeah, I actually thought that he had hung on to it, but you're right, incomplete, so fourth down. And now we'll see who comes on to punt here for Coastal Carolina. going to roll just inside Georgia Southern territory. So that was Evan Crenshaw that time. We saw Mac West earlier. Evan Crenshaw out this time. Didn't quite catch that on the end over him, but got a decent roll out of it. So the officials now got a towel over the football, trying to keep it as dry as they possibly can. These guys are on the sideline, got to keep them dry too, and they keep Keep switching footballs. 
Georgia Southern with a three-point lead on the road, their first conference game of the year. Hand off to White, all the way around to the right side. Cups it upfield. He's got the first down, stays on his feet, and down to the 25-yard line. That's the rushing game that I saw when I watched tape against Nebraska. And then last week as well, one tough runner is White. Officially down, they'll say at the 27-yard line. Still plenty for the first down, first and 10. Ventrice gives it to White again. Pushes his way forward for a couple. Travis Geiger, among others, in the tackle there, number five. There's Jalen White, number 25, the junior from Daleville, Alabama. Team's leading rusher coming into tonight. Led the nation in rushing his senior year in high school. Down in Alabama. They'll give it to him. Squirts up the middle, gets a couple yards, and then stopped. It'll be third down coming up here for Georgia Southern. Yeah, just three years ago, Jalen White, as a senior in high school, set an Alabama state record with over 3,500 yards rushing in one season. Nine different players substituted for Deshaun's on that set. Georgia Southern, eight for 13 now on third downs. That's your gambling, man-to-man defense here. They're just filling the gaps inside, forcing them to throw it. Third down and three, they give it to Green. Punches his way inside the 20, down to the 18. Will he have enough or not? Looks like he's going to be just shy. That right there, a good tackle. For Coastal Carolina to upend him just they're gonna, shy. They're going to kick it or they're going to line up to kick it. Clock's running. Too. Yep, play clock down to 15 already. They'll bring out Alex Rayner, hit a 45-yarder earlier. This one will be officially a 35-yarder. Play gonna, clock down to five, down to four. They all see it, and timeout is called. Or I was thinking with Alex Rayner, what's the difference? Back up five yards. <laughs> He's got that kind of leg. Uh, yeah, not a bad point, Nate. Why waste the timeout? Yeah, because now Georgia Southern has called two timeouts here in the second half yeah. already. It's not like he can't make it from five yards back. So a break here from Conway, fourth quarter, 12-15 left to play. This one a long way from over. It's the Eagles on top by three. All right, big moments in this ball game. Fourth and one, some discussion during the timeout on exactly what Georgia Southern was going to do. The weather has changed drastically here in just the last 10 or 15 minutes with the rain coming down. Man, Trees is in there. They're going for this. Looked like just before the timeout, they were going to try and kick it. You had brought up the point, hey, don't take a timeout. Just move him back five yards. He can still make it, still well, well within his range, but now they're going to set up and go for it as they pitch it to Jalen White. Finds room, gets the first down inside the 10. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Huge play. Number 25. From going for a field goal, taking a timeout, changing their minds. And on a fourth down conversion, boy, do they convert it. A touchdown for Jalen White and the Eagles. That's just old-fashioned power football. Give it to your best running back, get some blockers pulling in front of them, knock everybody down with the other shirt, just hit a hat. 18-yard touchdown run by Jalen White. And now Alex Rayner, who was set up for a field goal before the timeout, now for the extra point, and it is good. And Georgia Southern now with a 10-point lead here in the fourth quarter on the road. Again, plenty of time left in this one. 12.09 left to play. And what a game here in Conway. Van Trees, the pitch to White.
muscles his way through and scores. Well, again, an 18-yard touchdown run by Jalen White has Georgia Southern on top by 10. 12.09 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Alongside Nate Ross, I'm Jeff McCarriger. Thanks for joining us tonight here on ESPN+. Plus. Sunbelt battle, first Sunbelt game of the year for Georgia Southern. And their offense is starting to kick it into gear here in the second half. They average over 500 yards per game. Tops in the Sun Belt. They're at 324 now. And this one will be taken to a knee by McDoom and out to the 25-yard line. So, Nate, the big question is for Coastal Carolina, I mean, this becomes, I don't want to say, um, you know, a must-have, but really critical time here for Coastal to try and at least move the football here against a Georgia Southern defense that has really been solid tonight and has yet to give up a big chunk play. Yeah, they've been good. I, I think the Sean's got to get points. They don't need a touchdown because you're 10 down. You need points, though. And there's plenty of time left. It'll take eight minutes to score, which is what they're best at doing. Gives it to Beasley. He finds room. And tackle down near the 40-yard line. First down for C.J. Beasley. Good pickup on first down. Talk about Anthony Wilson a lot. That was a touchdown saving tackle by number 12, Anthony Wilson. That time. Beasley gets by him. He's gone. Rain continues to fall here at the stadium. Pistol action again here for Coastal. Fake the handoff. McCall was looking deep. It wasn't there. He takes off running inside Georgia Southern territory and takes a big hit out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And I think that was Derek Canteen again who's just had a bullseye on McCall so far in this one. They got some hitters on this defense. Wilson, Canteen. Yeah, right there, Canteen lowers his shoulder. Good hard tackle, that's all that was. Good, good read by Grace McCall, realizing there's nothing open, get what I can get. They give it to Beasley. He's able to push his way forward to pick up about four yards on first down. For just a minute after that tackle, it looked like Grayson McCall was signaling to come out of the game, but he might have been saying, give me the play, give me the play, I'm ready. I think that he wanted more receivers. They put in a different package here. I thought they were going completely empty. They're not. Pickup of three by Beasley, so second down and seven. Coastal down by ten. McCall again looking deep. This time fires deep across the middle into the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown! What a catch in the end zone by Tyler Roberts. Number five. Until Tyler. you see this again, you won't understand what a tight window this was. Tyler Roberts, Roberts runs a skinny post, but the free safety comes over. So essentially he's double teamed. Watch Grayson McCall put it between two receivers right there. That's a really tough throw. And a great catch in traffic for the touchdown. Derek Canteen was there. Justin Birdsong was right there. Anthony Wilson was in the territory. I mean, you're right, Nate. That was threaded right in between three white jerseys. The extra point is good. And we are back to a three-point game. Talk about throwing somebody open. He just found a small window and got it there. 10-10 left to play. Georgia Southern leads at 24-21. Well, Nate, you were just talking about the quick strike ability of Coastal Carolina. How about this? Four plays, 75 yards, 1 minute 59 seconds. 
Capped off in the 36-yard touchdown pass from Grayson McCall to Tyler Roberts, and just like that, a three-point game again. It's his first TD of the year. Yeah, big-time play. First couple uh, went out on the one-yard line. Now they're going to get great field position, Georgia Southern will. Let's take a look at the touchdown again. Grayson McCall having to be patient. Credit the offensive line. Gives him time. Hesitates just a second right here. Waiting for Tyler Roberts to come open. Right yep. between the coverage by him and the free safety coming over. And a little bit of a fake to the running back. Just freezes the backs for a split second. And gives the six foot four red shirt senior a chance to make the catch. Yeah, and you mentioned it, Nate. I mean, Derek Canteen was right there. One of the defensive backs for Georgia Southern. Justin Birdsong was flanking him on his other side, and then Anthony Wilson, he had to throw it over the top of Wilson as well. Perfect pass. Dropped it right in the bucket. Kyle Van Trees back on the field, and back to pass on first down. Chased out of the pocket. Fires it deep. He's got a man wide open, caught by Caleb Hood. That pass was for Bo Johnson, 11. But it was underthrown because he was under duress, and Caleb Hood runs under it. That pass was not intended for Caleb Hood, in my opinion, from watching it. Flushed him out of the pocket, threw it off his back foot. You'll see Ben jo Bo Johnson 11 there. You're absolutely right, Nate. He ran under it, right yep. place, right time. Van Trees. Flips it out into the flat. And now inside the 20 yard line, Jalen White. So two plays, and just like that, Georgia Southern now into the red zone. Shot to, kill, shot to clear player down. Little screen there. Missed tackle right there. And they finally get him to the ground. I don't know if that's to Jordan Shorn. That's his side of the field, but I couldn't tell who it was. Yeah, injured player down for Coastal Carolina. 9.38 left to play. Well, that is good news. It's Trey Pinckney who now is up walking off the field. A little gingerly on that left leg. <laughs> right about 12 minutes to go in this game the flood gets have opened offensively both ways well we joked back in the first half that the over under was around 70 out of vegas depending on what site you looked at and for a long time this game was 7-7 we're like we're never getting to 70 but who knows maybe we'll, maybe. <laughs> maybe we'll eventually get there it's in the 45 right now three-point game they like the screen here with these trips left they blocked the one defender, and they got at least five, six yards. What an answer this would be by Georgia Southern. Had a 10-point lead. Coastal with that quick strike, 75-yard drive in a minute, 59 seconds. And now the Eagles trying to do the same thing. Van Trees looks to the left. He's got Burgess. Gets inside the 15-yard line. It's exactly they love that. They got three wideouts out there. Two of them become blockers against the two defenders, and the safety doesn't have time to get up there, and they get five, six yards out of it. Like we said, you see it right here. This is a running play for this offense, basically. A pickup of five yards, so second down. And five now for Georgia Southern. Jalen White. They'll give it to him up the middle, and he'll pick up a couple of more. So third down and short now coming up for Georgia Southern. Jalen White didn't see the opening there. Tried to cut back against the grain. Got a couple. Couple's about third downs. We've got so many big ones in this game. Officially make it third down and four. Van Trees making sure he and Jalen White on the same page. We saw the center, Logan Langmeyer, making the call for the offensive line. Van Trees looks right, flips it across the middle. Complete, but not enough for the first down. And actually, they're going to say no catch. It hit the ground. He got popped and spun around as he caught it. 
And I guess he didn't have it long enough to make it completion. Yeah, it was J.T. Killen who came in, put a shoulder right on the ball and popped it out. Yeah, you got to make it. Got to make a football move. Jerry, Jeremy Singleton couldn't hold on to it. Fourth down and four. And they're going to bring out Alex Rayner. Again, he had a 45-yarder. This should be a chip shot for him, a big leg. Dead in the middle of the field. And this one is perfect by Rayner, who is now a perfect 6-for-6 six six on the season. And Georgia Southern will extend their lead to 6 with under eight minutes to play. If you're the shots, it's not the end of the world. Touchdowns give you seven when you get the extra point. And they did hold them out of the end zone. Lead for Georgia Southern, but a lot of time left. So officially a 30-yarder here for Alex Rayner, the redshirt junior from Kennesaw, Georgia. Well, the numbers for Kyle Van Treese. Starting quarterback for Georgia Southern, 22 of 35, 221 yards, and two touchdowns. Van Trees came into the night as the league's leading passer, averaging 322 yards per game. So below his average, but still impressive numbers for the Absolutely. graduate transfer from Buffalo. Tell you what, Grayson McCall of the Suns put up some pretty big numbers for Coastal as yep. well. McCall, 19 of 27. 232 with two touchdowns, no interceptions. So the number is starting to pop now on both sides. And a six-point game, just under eight minutes left to play. McDoom stands at the goal line. He's going to bring this one out to the 15. Cuts it back across the 20 and out close to the 25-yard line. Well, you know <laughs> Georgia Southern all week. Said, do not let that man get to the outside. Keep 16 in the middle of the field, and that's exactly what they do right here. Nice well, makes one there. man miss. Yep. We got 10 left. Boy, he is a special player, and we talked about him earlier. He's just a freshman, true freshman. Great speed. From Winter Garden, Florida. He's going to have a big career before it's all said and done here in Conway, South Carolina. Grayson McCall again has passed for 232 yards. They'll keep it on the ground here. And a big pickup on the first down. As the give was to Max Balthazar, the redshirt freshman. Good move by Balthazar when he got in the second level. He put both hands on the football. Because you know, you watch this. He gets through the first level. Two hands on the football right there. Good move. Boy, and he made Anthony Wilson miss, which is tough to do. McCall fakes it up the middle, and he's going to be sacked back inside the 30-yard line. He wanted to get rid of it. The pocket just collapsed on top of him. There's nothing he could do about it. Yeah, he had absolutely zero time to even look upfield. Pressure right up the middle by one of the linebackers for the Eagles, Kadri Jackson. Yep, number nine, Kadri Jackson came untouched. And now second down at 16. Low snap, night catch by McCall. Plenty of time to throw. It was caught, lost at the last second out of bounds, but still caught at the 39-yard line by Gravette. No blitz, he had all kinds of time to throw that one. Back to the original line. Xavier Gravett with his fourth catch of the night. They get quite a bit of it back, but still third down and nine. Across the middle. Wide open. It's complete inside the 20-yard line. Still on his feet. And Coastal Carolina ties the football game. Jared Brown with the catch and the score. Grace McCall amazes me. It's third and ten. He just got nailed a couple plays ago. 
and he finds the speed demon Brown on a long slant across the middle. And nobody's catching this kid. You're just not going to catch him from behind. And again, Justin Birdsong was right there just to step behind, and McCall able to put it right past him and into the hands of Jared Brown. And now this will be for the lead. He's a special quarterback. Good snap, clean hold, and Coastal Carolina retakes the lead here in the fourth quarter. 5.55 left to play. A 61-yard touchdown pass and catch as Coastal leads at 28-27. Coach Chadwell told us he's got to use Brown as a running back because they don't have any running backs. This kid's a big-time receiver. 61 yards for the touchdown. AT gives the shots the lead. Boy, both teams now exchanging blows. Coastal Carolina, four plays, 76 yards, one minute, 54 seconds. This one bobbled by Darius Lewis, picks it up, twisting and turning down inside the 15-yard line. And Georgia Southern is going to have a long way to go here with 5.49 to play. Really smart job not to kick it deep, make somebody make a play with a red football and a little bit of drizzle coming down. They pinned him, basically pinned him deep for a kickoff. Normally you get it to 25. Ball bounces around. I don't know if you should let it bounce like that, son. And then a lot of black shirts to bring him down. Kyle Van Trace brings Georgia Southern back on the field. Van Trees, 22 of 35, 221 yards. A couple of touchdown passes, one interception. Amari Jones goes in motion. They hand it off to Jalen White up the middle. He'll pick up about a yard, and that's it. Well, Van Trees is known for his poise. He's going to have to have it right here because he's down a point, obviously. Big-time field goal kicker, but a long way to go to get into field goal range. J.T. Killen, the redshirt junior, on the stop out of Lake Wiley, South Carolina. Second down and nine. Van Trees looking to pass this time. Fires down the sideline, and it is caught. What a catch by Amari Jones. Boy, there wasn't a lot of room on that sideline. Good coverage, better pass. Kid's got an arm. Jones with his fifth catch on the night. Let me rephrase that. Young man, he's 24 years old, has an arm. They give it to White, tries to bounce it outside. Stays on his feet, enough for the first down, and just inside Coastal Carolina territory. It took Coastal one minute, 54 seconds to take the lead. And now Georgia Southern trying to get a quick strike on their own to take the lead right back. Coming up on four and a half minutes to play. They put the ball right at midfield. They hand it off again to White. Again with room inside the 35. First down for Georgia Southern. And that will quiet the crowd here as you look at it again. Good run over that just behind the left tackle there. They realize they can't get much dead up the middle in the A-gap, so they're bouncing it outside a little bit. 17 carries on the evening. Jalen White out, Gerald Green in here on first and 10. They fake it to him. Van Trees across the middle. And it is caught by Derwin Burgess. Burgess with his seventh catch here in this game. They're in field goal range right now. They've got a guy who's been perfect so far this season, six for six. Good coverage, better pass. Tobias Fletcher right there for Coastal. There's the clap again by Van Trees. Got a couple of the defenders for Coastal to move, and now it looks like Coastal's going to switch up their defense. Ventrice trying to sniff it out. Gets pressure to the right, able to get rid of it to Green, but he is upended. It'll be gained about two or three yards. First time Ventrice has had anybody in his face when he threw the ball, but he's still got the completion. 
second down, Eagles. Remember, Georgia Southern used those timeouts. They only have one left. Shots have all three left. Yeah, good point. Three minutes left to play. They know they're in field goal range, so they're in no hurry right here. And the one timeout, remember, on that fourth down ended up being a touchdown. Yep. So it wasn't the worst thing, obviously, for the Eagles. Down by one. Second down and seven for Van Trees. Gives it to Green and two flags in the backfield. And this appears to be holding on Georgia Southern. Well, they look disappointed. This is big. It's, it's, I don't know if it takes them out of field goal range, but it backs them up 15. This has actually been a pretty clean game. Only seven penalties combined in this game so far. It's Coach Chadwell, what he wants to do. Holding, 66, offense. Ten-yard penalty will be second down. All right, they are going to take it. He wants to back him up about 40 yards, but they're only going to back him up 10. Coastal calls a timeout. Now they have two left. Oh, there you see the hold. Yep. Yep, Logan Langmeyer. Everybody saw that one. Threw a bunch of flags. All right, so it's second in, uh, what, 16, 17? But I still think if they had to kick it from here, it's a 47-yarder. That's within his range. Hit a 45-yarder back in the first half. Hit a 30-yarder here in the second half, did Alex Rayner. Looking at the American flag just to the right of the goalpost, he's kicking it with the wind helping. Not a lot, but it is helping. 2.33 left to play. There you see number 21, J.T. Killen, who stands right in the middle of this Coastal Carolina defense. Sean's going to preserve this one. Somebody's got to make a play here. You can see the legs. J.T. Killen, I mean, they are soaked out there. It's been raining now for a good half hour. Here we go, second down and 17 for Van Trees. Five wide receivers. Fakes it left, goes across the middle to Singleton. Cuts it back to the sideline. He's got room on this left side inside the 10. And all the way down to the six-yard line and two flat come out late. They're going to call a late hit on the shots. I think what a great call. Middle screen. They have not run it the entire evening. Run a bunch of screens, but not up the middle. Van Trees just holds it long enough. To let the lineman get After in. The play, personal foul. Defense number four. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So the penalty on Tobias Fletcher, and that's going to put Georgia Southern down to about the three yard line. First and goal, Eagles. Is it too much time to let him score? I was just thinking the so same thing. So you get thing. the ball back? It's a great point, Nate. I mean, if you make them work and work and work for four downs, you're going to have like a minute to go. And for Georgia Southern, do you just run a run play here, or do you just punch it in, score, and turn it over to your defense to try and get the win? We'll see what head coach Clay Helton for Georgia Southern's thinking. And we'll see what the Shauna Clears call on defense as well. Green sets up just to the right of Van Trees. They'll give stuffed. it to him, and he runs into a swarm of black jerseys. But honestly, Nate. I'm not sure that's the worst thing in the world for Georgia Southern. As Coastal wants to call a timeout and save some time yeah, they're here with 217 to play. Because they need time. No matter what happens, a field goal gives Georgia Southern the lead as well, obviously. Only down by one. So, Sean's want to have preserve as much of that clock as they can for their offense, no matter what happens. If they stop them, of course, different story. So, just one timeout left now for Coastal Carolina. They'll put a second back on the clock to make it 2.18 left to play. Now both teams with one timeout left. For the Georgia Southern Eagles, they were supposed to come up, obviously, yesterday. Uh, couldn't do that because Hurricane Ian was here in the Carolinas. So Georgia Southern didn't leave Statesboro, Georgia, about a four-hour drive from here, until this morning, 8 o'clock this morning, they had the yep. guys up and on the bus. Got about a four-hour drive. Coach told us they're going to try and check into the hotel, do a few things at the hotel, 
scouting things, run through just a few things just to try and keep their minds sharp. And then eat and then head over here for almost. It's been a long day for the Eagles. Grayson McCall, I just looked at him. He's on the sideline throwing 30-yard passes to get loose. Chance will probably stop it again, but that's the last one they have. If they can keep him out of the end zone. Jalen White, 17 carries, 142 yards for Georgia Southern. And he's standing just to the right of Antrese. Second and goal for Georgia Southern. Antrese is going to roll out. Looks into the end zone and nearly oh intercepted. Oh right Jordan in the Strong. hands, yeah, to Jordan, Jordan Strong. Strong. He jumped that route and he had it. He just got a little too excited. You know nobody's more upset than he is. Watch this. He just jumped the route. Forget it, pick six. That's just a pick to end the football game. Not a lot of... Yards to cover here, so tougher for the offense than it is for the defense. And it stopped the clock for Coastal. They didn't have to take a yep. timeout. Third down. And they go up the middle to Jalen White, pushing the pile inside the five, down to the three. And that will bring up fourth down and goal for Georgia Southern. 2.07 to play. Got to kick it. I mean, you're down a point. You have to kick it here, don't you? Yeah, I mean, you, you have to. You have to take the lead. Yes. I mean, I guess they could, you know, I mean, just put all their chips in and say, all right, we're going to win or lose it right here. You got a great field goal kicker. You got a chance to get the lead. But if you don't score, I doubt you're getting that football back. Only one timeout left. I mean, basically, Costa would need just one first down, depending on what happens here. They'd need just one first down, and this game would be over. I'd be shocked if he doesn't kick this. There's Alex Rayner warming up. I love it, but kickers never get near the huddle. Just leave me alone. Let me do my thing. Just tell me what to do. You yeah. need me or not? <laughs> Am I playing or not, coach? Put me in, please. Wet football. Snap, hold. All important. Rainer again, two for two today, a 45-yarder, a 30-yarder. He's six for six on the season. Mark Langston, the snapper and the punter. Anthony Beck will be the holder. Well, worst-case scenario for Jamie Chadwell right there in Coastal Carolina. Let's say Georgia Southern does go for it and score, right? They take a six-point lead. The last two possessions, the last two scores for Coastal have each been touchdowns that have come on drives of less than two minutes. And if Georgia Southern kicks the field goal, Coastal is down less than a field goal, so a field goal wins it, down two. So these are all the things I'm sure that Clay Held and his staff are talking about. This will be real interesting to see what they do, how aggressive they want to be. That's Coach Helton speaking to the referee right at the top of your picture there. So he's saying, what do you think, should we kick? What do you think we should do? <laughs> Well, he's he wants, obviously talking about the clock. Yeah, he wanted the clock to go on the wind, but it was an incomplete pass. Yeah, he's pleading, pleading his case right now with Jeremy Parker, our lead official. Well, they're down not going to the take time off the clock, trust me. Clay Helton, 12 years as a coach at Southern California. Last six he spent as the head coach. Let go a couple of years ago after a slow start to the season. Disappointing loss to Stanford. And he flat out told us that he couldn't have been more excited to get this job last year. And if you missed us talking about it back in the first half, he said, listen, if they can do it at Cincinnati, we can do it at Georgia Southern. Yeah. I remember I watched the Nebraska game, and he was standing next to the official because he was close. And he said, I want timeout at one. And when he said timeout, the ref blew the whistle and stopped it. And it was like six on the clock. He went off on him right there, too. Fourth down and goal. Officials calling for both teams to come back out on the field. And what will we see here for Georgia Southern? Are we going to see Rayner? Or are we going to see the grad transfer from Buffalo, Kyle Van Treese? 19's in the huddle right there. I can see it from up here. 
Will there be 19 or will there be six? Or will they fake a field goal? That would take big time cuts. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. Yeah, take the delay game, so what? Now you know they're going to kick. It's what they should have done last time. So it's essentially an extra point. There is Alex Rayner, two for two tonight, six for six on the season. And yeah, this is going to be a little chip shot for Rayner. This will go down, looks like at about a 25 yarder. He's done this thousands of times by himself on a practice field. This will be for the lead and potentially for the win, depending on how this game turns out obviously here in the final two minutes. Anthony Beck, the punter, also the holder here, hollering out the call for the line, and here we go. Alex Rayner, the redshirt junior from Kennesaw, Georgia. For the lead, and he's got it. Georgia Southern with a two-point lead, 2.05 to play. Let's look over to the Chanticleer bench. Nothing wrong with that. Well, this week, Grayson McCall got put on the Johnny Unitas watch list. Going to have a chance to make something happen on that list if he can get down the Chanticleer's down the field to win this one. Rainer now 3-4-3 three, three here on the night. And all three have been critical. Take a look at the game summary as Georgia Southern has retaken the lead. 185 rushing yards for Georgia Southern. 469 total yards. A little bit below their average of 510 per game. Trust me, they'll take the 469 to home. In fact, it states for over the W. Yeah, other than the rushing yards, pretty similar numbers right there. Yep. One timeout left. Excuse me, no timeouts left for the shots. They used it. All right, we've been talking about it all night. Will Matthew McDoom, number 16, standing on the goal line right now for Coastal. Will Michael Lance, the kicker, give him a chance? He's going to give him a chance. McDoom makes the catch at the goal line. Slips and upended at the 17-yard line. Yes. Good special teams play there for Georgia Southern. And now Coastal will have a significant way to go here with 2.01 to play. He slipped on the cut. The Georgia Southern try to keep them in the field of play. If you're the shots, you got to get out of bounds. Or get up there and clock it very quickly if you make a big game because no timeouts left for the guys in the black and teal. Grayson McCall, the redshirt junior. From Indian Trail, North Carolina. Preseason conference offensive player of the year. Off to a great start. And facing a long way to go here to try and win this ball game. Smart Runs move. out of bounds. Yep, to the 25 yard line. Like seven, eight yards of play. You can go a long way with 155. Just get out of bounds and stop it. If you do have a game in the middle of the field, get the ball to the umpire. He's the one that has to put it down. Don't throw it to another official. Find the guy in the middle of the field and give him the football. McCall looking to pass. Fires it complete across the 25. Former progress are going to give it all the way out to about the 27-yard line. Good catch there. Good hands by Sam Pinckney here in the rain. Still just shy of the first down, third down, and maybe about a foot. Plenty of time. McCall pitches it to Beasley, and he is tackled right at the line to gain. I think he got, Nate, maybe just enough. They're going to stop it to spot it and measure it. And that's another Coastal Carolina. And now they have to stop it while the chains move, so a little bit of a break. And the signal made by the official to 
Start the clock. First down at 10. <laughs> oh, and they're going to review this last play. That's from upstairs. If it's close, they're going to review it. Well, the question is, did they move the chains? They did move the chains. So you can see it's right there on the 29. Well, I don't know if he made it. I, if he made it, it doesn't matter. They're going to go for it. Yeah, they've got to go it's for it regardless. Take more time. You can see the mark at the top of the picture. I thought he had to get to about the 28. The mark is right in front of him right there. We were talking with Terry Walters, the replay official, during halftime. What they will do is they'll take their top two or three replays and then do picture in picture. Line them up, synchronize them time-wise, and... And, of course, who was on the tackle? Anthony Wilson, number 12. Right, and that way they can kind of decipher exactly what happened when by putting everything yeah, together. Yeah, they might put time back on the clock, actually, or take time away. So 113 on the clock. Once again, it was it was called a first down. I don't know if you got enough video evidence to take it away. There's the yard marker right there. I mean, he falls in front of it, but is that that's not the official one. The official one's on the other side of the field with the 10-yard thing. You're seeing the white hat. That's Jeremy Parker. He's our head referee on the field, obviously talking things over upstairs with Terry, who's in a booth just two down from us. Here in the press box. This gives both sides a chance to figure out, get everybody on the same page offensively and defensively as to what they want to do. Yeah, and you mentioned it, Nate. I mean, a lot to look at here because they've got to look at clock issues now as well. So a lot to discuss. Boy, and what a second half this has been. Both teams really had a tough time getting things going here in this one. This game was tied at 7 at half we expected some big numbers some big passing numbers big offensive numbers top couple of teams in the Sunbelt Conference as far as total offense goes well changes the shots uh, perspective if they don't make it they got to run a fourth down play if they do make it they go back to their original attack the football field well, same thing for Georgia Southern it's going to be a fourth down or they're going to they're going to have to defend the first down Coastal Carolina, the only 4-0 and team in the Sun Belt coming into tonight. James Madison was 3-0 and coming into today, but Coastal Carolina, only 4-0 and team. Matter of fact, Coastal, the only 4-0 and team in the whole group of five. The ruin of first down stands. Okay, so the clock should start on the wind now, if I'm, if I'm correct. First down at 10. We'll see if there's any oh, adjustments. Quick. Made it all to the clock. Doesn't look like it. 113 will stay. It's going to go on the snap. Nope, it's going to go on the line. <laughs> Whistle blows, and there we go. 70 seconds left to play. McCall under pressure from behind, able to step up. That one in and out of the hands of Beasley, who came from right to left out of the backfield. He might have gotten a little more out of that one, too, because he was behind or next to the defender. The defender was chasing him. Just couldn't you hold, couldn't secure the football. It does stop the clock, but Chanta Clears will take the yards. No timeouts for Coastal Carolina. Second down and 10 as the rain continues to fall. The clock at five. McCall looking down the right sideline. Zips it right through the hands of Pinkney, I believe. Yeah, it was Pinkney who he was looking for here on the near sideline. Coach is wanting to flag there. I don't disagree. There was a lot of grabbing as that ball went up. I'll look at it again. 
Yeah, well contested there by Derek Canteen. Tough to tell on that replay how much contact it was. And now third down and ten. The call, kind of throwing it up for grabs. Oh, grabs his jersey. And That's now they're going to get a flag. I mean, literally, he was just, I mean, desperation mode, trying to make something happen. And it looks like Coastal is going to get helped out by a pass interference call. Their canteen grabbed his jersey. You can see from behind. Pass interference against Georgia Southern, and the drive will stay alive here for Coastal. Pass interference. Defense, number 13. Be a 15 yard penalty. First down. As a defender, you're just grabbing anything you can. Watch 13 if we can see it in the picture. Grabs his jersey right there as he yep. goes to get over top of him. That's, that's an easy call for the official. Yeah, really, even a lot of contact even before. Yep. He's trying to grab anything he can as a defender. 55 seconds left. The call looks over to the sideline. Plenty of time on the clock, 14. Looks like the Shauna Clear is changing the play. And McCall goes deep, and the catch is made by Jared Brown. What a catch on the sidelines. And now Coastal Carolina awfully close to field goal territory, down two with 49 seconds to play. This is the pass they throw when they warm up. Brown just ran a straight go route. Got He might have got popped out of bounds too. But a great catch and, and Grace McCall put it dead on the money. Birdsong with a huge hit and Brown able to hang on to it. 46 yard field goal from here if they have to. Plenty of time left. You can throw it in the middle of the field here. Pressure up the middle. And McCall yeah, just pretty much had to get rid of that yep, one. That's fine. But you can throw it in the middle of the field and go up and clock it. You got almost almost 50 seconds. 48 seconds is a lot of time. Or yet, yet that young man had a football game. You're a Sean DeClear fan. He's a redshirt freshman. He's going to be around for a while. Kate Hensley, by the way, here wondering his longest field goal of the season 40 yards but we got some rain issues going on here at the field you can see kind of that sheen on the field it's awfully wet down there 45 seconds it only ran for one second 45 seconds please for home cooking that's all that is <laughs> kate hensley wants to touch down more than anybody in this stadium i mean he'd love to win the football game but he's saying come on guys you can score Hensley, a redshirt freshman from Johnson City, Tennessee. I'll be glad to kick the extra point if you score a touchdown, I promise. 45 seconds left. And a handoff up the middle. Room for Beasley to run. Oh Leads over a defender and scores. Unbelievable play by C.J. Beasley. You may not see a better play in all of college football all weekend. If that's not a top 10 sports center play, I'm never watching ESPN Sports Center again. Watch this. Whoop! Right over him. CJ Beasley, the redshirt sophomore from Norfolk, Virginia. He just jumped over a five foot eleven defensive back, and that young man didn't go down tackling. He jumped over him. In the famous words of Jack Buck, I, I can't believe what I just saw. I they liked it last year a couple of times. That was amazing. You know, enough people want to kick the extra point. They're going for two. Smart play. Up four, going for two. That's smart. A call rolling out, has a man open, but throws it too short. And that was well defended on the side. Wyland Free with some makeup speed there because Jared Brown was open for a second, but Free able to knock it away. 
And so Coastal with a four-point lead, 38 seconds left to play. Didn't look like they were ready for that two-point play on offense. But we got to show that play again. C.J. Beasley, not the starter, not the second team, probably the third team running back, who got an opportunity. Watch this run and watch this jump. That's unbelievable. Let me tell you something. The other thing is watch Gravette 85 with the block. After he leaves him, watch 85. He's in front of him. Can't see it well there. Makes a nice block, but nobody was stopping C.J. Beasley on that one. Nobody. That was Justin Birdsong, by the way. Six foot, 185, fifth year senior. That defensive back for Georgia Southern, who C.J. Beasley at about 5'9", 5'10", just jumped over. Another pooch kind of kick, I would think. Yep. Calling the fair catch. Yep, immediately fair catch called for. Are you kidding me? Well, 7-7 seven, seven at halftime, remember that. I so wish that there was a camera in the booth next to us because the assistant coaches, coaches for Coastal nuts. Carolina are in that booth next to us. There's about, what, six or seven of them, yep. Nate. And they absolutely went crazy. High five and jumping up and down like little schoolgirls. Remember the offensive coordinator for Buffalo who kind of notoriously was caught in an opposite moment Buffalo last weekend NFL. for Buffalo? Yeah, this was the opposite of that. These guys were going nuts next to us in complete jubilation. Coach Chadwell has said, and I hate to bring this up now with 38 seconds to go, I'll wait. Van Tree still with a little bit of time and fires incomplete right in the hands of one of his star receivers that he's been going to all night, Derwin Burgess. Linebackers didn't get deep enough. You got to get deep, guys. They're not throwing five yard outs here. They want to get down the field because they have a pretty good field goal kicker, but they need a touchdown because they're down four. They love the slants across the middle. Just couldn't hold on to it. Boy, the rain really coming down now. 32 seconds left to play. One timeout. Van Trace from his own 20. And he's sacked! JT Killen. Sacked one time all year. That second one's a big one for Deshaun's. Watch Killen 21. Little stun up front. They just bull rushed him inside. And Georgia Southern has to call their last time out just to save what little time left they have. Twenty-eight seconds left to play. Third down coming up for Georgia Southern. That young man in your picture right there with the white shirt is Teddy Gallagher, a great linebacker for this football team, now a grad assistant. I guarantee you, he has mentored that man right there, JT Killen, and he's no prouder of anybody. That's Teddy Gallagher, a great linebacker, JT Killen, maybe the next great one here. You think he's going to be a head coach someday? He's going to be a coach. Yeah. <laughs> Got a chance to be a good one. Third down and make it 17 yards in what has become a driving rain for Van Trees in trouble again. Throws it up and it is knocked down. Fourth down coming up for the Eagles. Who would you, who did it? Killing again. 21. You want to intercept it, but just bat it down. He's under pressure. 21 killing goes up there. High point just knocks it down. Great play. We talked about it earlier. Jamie Chadwell, one of his big points of emphasis when he took over this program was finishing in the fourth quarter. Coastal 24-14, now lead it by four. Potentially the final play of the game here. Knocked away, and Coastal is going to win this one. In an absolute rainstorm Charles that has come Arnold. out of nowhere. So do the Shauna Clears here in the fourth quarter, down 24 to 14. They come all the way back, and they will be one snap away 
from improving to 5-0 and oh on the season. All the off-season drills are aimed at the fourth quarter. All the competitive drills are aimed at the fourth quarter. Coach Chabrol said, we have owned the fourth quarter. I was hesitant to say it when Georgia Southern got the ball back. They have owned the fourth quarter tonight. Grayson McCall takes the knee and look at the Shauna Clears players flooding out into the field, literally and figuratively, here in this rain as Coastal's going to win it 34 to 30. Kevin Davis, the sports information director, put out a press release this week that Grayson McCall was added to the Johnny Unitas award list. He kind of helped himself with that award tonight as he took his team down the field twice. Unbelievable plays by both teams. Georgia Southern gave it all they had, but that young man's a special quarterback. He really is. He's got some really good receivers. And the man of the night catching the football was the redshirt freshman, Jared Brown. Grayson McCall finishes this game 23 of 34, 335 yards, three touchdowns. But, Nate, the play of the game, don't forget, here it is. C.J. Beasley, wow, with the leap over Birdsong. Scott Van Pelt, you better go nuts on this one tonight, young man, because that was a special play. You may not see a better athletic run and move by a college football player this weekend, and that is one happy head coach right there, J.B. Chadwell. I don't know if I've ever seen a better move than that. He leaped over a six-footer. So C.J. Beasley, the play of the game, the redshirt sophomore from Norfolk. That ends up being the difference. Again, your final score. Coastal wins it here at home. They're 5-0, 34-30 your final. For Nate Ross and our entire ESPN crew here on the campus of Coastal Carolina, I'm Jeff McCarriger. Thanks for watching as we say goodnight here from Conway, South Carolina.